this. This. Yo, 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 yo. Party people. Party people in the place to be. I wish I could rap. I would definitely do that if I could. Okay, so check it out. This is gonna be real trippy. Yo, Dom. What up? What up, man? Yo, they still haven't approved our hype uh, or our uh, rage emote yet, so that's still pending with Twitch. Um, <clears throat> so this is gonna trip you out. Ready? Are you ready for this? There's gonna be two of me. You thought one was was enough. Oh yeah, there's a cat in the tree. I should point that out right now. Okay. Ready? You ready? Check it out. Bing. Hey there. How's it going, Yiddle? You look a little... Hmm. Past me. You look a little like you're not me now. You look a little different. You look like you're me from about two or three days ago. Which is interesting. And also that looks like the past chat. I think the new chat will appear like way up way up there. So, um, actually, let me test that out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So chat for now is going to be way up there. That's going to be past chat. We're trying something. I, I probably should have prefaced with this actually. Um, let me go back. So what we're doing today is, uh, we're going to watch my PB from, it feels so weird saying that, like I'm some sort of like good person at this game. Uh, we're going to watch my 6th place PB from about two days ago. Um, mostly uh, so I can do some commentary over it and give some explanation. I'm going to try and be relatively thorough. And uh, if anybody has any questions in the chat, uh, this would be probably the best time. Because I know when I'm running, a lot of times it's I like brush over things. I'll be explaining one thing, but doing another trick while I'm explaining an old trick. And um, <clears throat> it can be really hard to keep up with. So the purpose of this is sort of going to be like a tutorial explanation. And also for, for my purposes, it'll help me identify parts that I could have done better. Uh, because now it's going to be sort of like finding areas of improvement after this most recent PV is going to be um, a little bit more difficult. So this is something a little different. For me, I guess. I've never done this. So we'll uh, we'll sort of see how it goes. I just set up this this little layout um, just for the for the purposes of this. It's not it's not great, but it works. Um, yo, Master Dean 30, thank you for the follow, man. And and welcome. Welcome to the master class. Um <laughs> I'm I'm I, I have to admit, I am pretty good at this game at this point. Uh, sixth place is is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, we got two needles. I should have pre-recorded something in a different shirt so that way I could have like had a thing where I talked to myself. But I, you know, I can't. I'm not gonna think that far ahead. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna uh, basically how I have this working is I have the run uh, downloaded and it's playing through VLC. I've never played. Yeah, I should have made me... Oh, oh, that's such a good idea. Oh. All right, next time. Um, it's a... Uh, it's it's my weekend, technically, tonight. It's the start of my weekend, so I'm sort of here to just chill. Have a nice, chill, relaxed stream. We're going to talk about some things. Might be boring. Might be interesting. Um, but the, the goal will be that if you watch this, you will have a much better idea of <laughs> what's up king of midgard yeah dude right like who's this who's this he has to prove that he is the real niddle like they he has to tell you something that only niddle and chat would know um anyway so let's start uh i'm gonna keep the volume on the uh playback pretty low other than certain points dom thank you for the cheer man you didn't you ain't gotta do that but i <laughs> I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you for the for the hundred bits. 
showing me your bits in chat all the time. Um, so yeah, let's let's go. Isan Genki. So uh, the reason I wanted to have uh, my face cam up is so you can see my reactions. Oh, and VLC has crashed. So we're off to a really good start. Uh, let me just pull that back up real quick. Uh, when I tested this, it worked kind of fine. Let's see if this works. Oops, VLC has crashed. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. I know, dude. I was there. I was fucking there. VLC, boom. Okay, let's try this again. Oh god, I hope this works. I might have to change something. We might have to watch it through Twitch. We might just watch it through Twitch. Alright, new plan. We're watching it through Twitch. Sorry, technical difficulties. This this was absolutely expected. I, uh, I'm a poor planner. Uh... And that's just, that's the way it goes. Uh, two seconds, I'll get this up. Uh, two seconds, I'll get this up. Uh, two seconds. Sorry, I feedbacked. <laughs> okay, almost there. Hang on. You missed the real needle. <laughs> uh, let's see. We do uh, window capture. Do this, do this, boom, window capture, make it visible, put it down here, there we go, there we go, look at this, what a legend, okay, um, let me actually, real quick, unmute, this is it, this is the no reset run, okay, <clears throat> now we can begin, Isan Genki, I hope this doesn't crash, um, so yeah, just for some context, this is Resident Evil 7, uh, any percent, PC, easy, New Game Plus. New Game Plus means we get to use all the New Game Plus items, which, for the purpose of our, uh, of our run, the most important items would be the Albert, um, which is a OP pistol, um, the running shoes, which are walking shoes, which allow you to walk faster. Uh, yeah, we can make fun of the other needle because the other needle is going to get really stressed. Like, 30 minutes into the run, you're going to see a total change in facial expression. Like, right now, I'm, like, upbeat and I'm happy. Uh, yeah, we get the circular saw, we get the, uh, infinite ammo, and the walking shoes. Those are the, those are the three main differences between new game plus and new game. In new game, you don't run with those items, you got to pick up your ammo, you got to pick up your guns. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's, you know... Uh, both of the runs are pretty optimized at this point. Um, you know, optimized to a point where getting getting world record, you would have to basically do everything perfectly optimal and do, like, some new trick to optimize it further. Um, <laughs> new game runners are the elite. I, I, I can't lie about that. I My monkey brain can't comp compensate for new game. Um <laughs> I know, dude. He, he he probably could. Of all people, Aragold probably could. I don't know. Rossi's New Game Plus is easily his most optimized category, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, Ross Rossi is the world record holder. His time is 127.13, I think. Um, is this going to get really disorienting with the two me's? If it is, let me know, and I'll just put myself over my former self, and we can just forget about it. But I think it'll be really funny if, like, I'm also doing, the, you know, which one's the real, which, what's happening in real time? What's, what was pre-recorded? You don't know. Was all of this pre-recorded? Say something in chat and find out. <laughs> Not the first time you've shopped at Little twice a day. <laughs> okay. So the first part of this run is pretty simple. Um, we're just going to go straight to the guest house. There's not a lot other than basic movement optimization, which means you want to take your corners as tight as you can, and you want to follow really, really uh, strict lines. So basically, whenever you can get to the left side to make a corner quicker, you want to do that. <laughs> Please let me know. Let me know when you do. Um, so... This 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 whole first section is all about just walking quickly. Um, there's a there's a minor thing that you can get here. It saves about two seconds at most. It's called Daddy Boost. Uh, we didn't get it in this run, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's a free two seconds, and it happens randomly, and nobody knows why. 
So uh, if it happens for you in a run, you might not get it the next time. It's it's kind of a nightmare. Um, that's one of the first movement parts that can lose you time. That that little crouch I did, because if you bump into uh, that that little fence thing, uh, I don't I don't think you are in this run. If you bump into that little fence thing, you waste time. And also, if you crouch too early, you waste time. Um, uh, dude, I, I, I think like two people were watching the stream. It was not a lot of people. Um, Daddy Boost, basically, you run really fast. So normally, when you see Jack, you slow down. But with Daddy Boost, you run really fast. Hang on. I'm going to go back. That's the whole point of this. We can go back. So you're going to see me do something here that you're going to see me do maybe uh, two or three other times in the run. Um, uh, and and just, just to ex explain really quick, Daddy Boost, you, you move really fast instead of slowing down when you see Jack. And when you get it perfectly optimal, you actually like can pass Jack as he's disappearing. Because when he, when he walks around the corner, he just disappears. So uh, you can actually see him disappear if you get it fast enough. Uh, what we're about to do here is a retry. Um, the reason for this retry is because Ethan has two different... Uh, Tana Banana, welcome to the family. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Uh, why do I perform so poorly? <laughs> um, so, uh, shit, what was I saying? Uh, this is the first of several retries. Uh, Ethan has two running speeds, an outdoor running speed and an indoor running speed. As soon as he gets indoors, when he reaches the guest house, he switches to his indoor running speed. Don't know why Capcom made it like that. I think maybe politeness. You don't run inside the house. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's to like make it more tense. I, I, I really don't know. Um, what happens when we retry here, and it doesn't happen in all locations, is we actually reset our running speed. And you'll see me do this a couple more times throughout the run. And... Um, yeah, that's, that's about all there is to it. And you'll also see me buffer before I do it. So you'll see me hit escape multiple times. And since we go by the in-game timer, um, that doesn't lose us any time. Pausing and unpausing pauses the in-game timer, which is what we go off for the speedrun. So it's ideal to optimize it as much as you can to get it right on the frame so you can retry as soon as possible. What I'm looking for is a loading icon in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. As soon as I see that loading icon, I can retry, and I know the quick save was made, and I'm going to be put right there. That was a lot, but now I won't have to really explain the retries quite as much from now on. Ready. So I did the little pause buffer. It's kind of hard to see the uh, upper left-hand icon, but trust me, it was there, and if you play the game, you'll see it. Uh, and that just lets you know that an autosave was made. Um, so this next part... You're going to see me uh, crouch and pull our little lever thing. <laughs> um, and then we're going to do a turn and go through a door. Uh, what we ideally want to do here, and this is going to go quick. Um, what, he, what we ideally want to do here is as we're bumping into the door, we want to press F. Because that pushes the door open. Uh, which, which makes it a little bit quicker. Like literally 0.3 seconds maybe faster to get through the door. I only recently discovered that that was a thing. My fault. Um, another thing we're going to do, which is PC exclusive, is we're going to drop our FPS to 30. And the reason for this, and it's going to happen a few other times in the run, is because Ethan's properties change. Uh, the hitboxes in all the game changes. So, um, when, w the easiest way to phrase it is that Ethan becomes slippery. You can slip past hitboxes faster, you won't get hit by certain things uh, in the same way you would, and we're going to use it a few times in the run to kind of just squeeze past shit. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's PC exclusive. But yeah, that's... Sorry. That's just true. <laughs> uh, what, what's up, Aztec Goddess? Uh, so we're switching our FPS. My menuing is, is really fast in this run. I can't believe it was that fast. Um, and then we're going to climb down this ladder. I know I've already said a mouthful, and I'm talking really fast, but those are some basic tricks that are going to recur a few times throughout the run. We're going to do both retries and FPS manipulation at different points, and I'll, I'll explain why we do each one a little bit, but now you kind of understand the basic mechanics behind that. Yo, Top Hatter, what's up, man? Came at a great time. You came so I could thwart my evil twin and out-explain him. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? So, uh, this is, again, just a, uh, this is just a, uh, walking simulator. Oh, yeah, we added badges. We added badges, so every month you get a new badge, 
And uh, they, I think they came out pretty cool. Just saying. Um, <laughs> so we're going to do a trick here. It's really simple. Uh, there's normally a jump scare that happens here. A dead body floats up from the water. And if we look to the right, uh, we don't see that dead body. Uh, don't ask me why. I, I think it has something to do with how the dead body is positioned and how they wanted you to look at the jump scare. If we look at that wall, we, we don't see the dead body. So I'm going to pick up the bolt cutters here. I'm going to go. I'm going to open the uh, our little door. Uh, top header, just to explain, we're we're doing a uh, explanation run because I got a I got a sub 128 uh, the other night, and I was really stressed during the run, as you'll see by, you know, my former self. Uh, so I I wasn't really able to explain as much as I would have liked to, and I'm I'm sort of just using this as a as a good way to uh, I don't know teach people how to how to run the game if they want to. Or if, if, you, if you already do run the game, maybe I'll teach you something you didn't know. Um, so what I'm going to do here is our first inventory manipulation. And um, the inventory management in this game is, is pretty critical. It's basically a boss fight in itself. Um, <laughs> yeah, and if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll, I'll pause and stuff. It's no problem. Um, so let me just explain some of the inventory management because it's going to come up a lot. And it, again, it's a concept that uh, once you kind of get what we're what we're going for, you'll sort of see what what I'm aiming for each time. Um, may not be a great idea. Yeah, that's also true. May not be a great idea. I mean, it's not like we just got sixth or anything. I'm I'm just saying. Um, so the uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete. We have a we have an email from uh, from Mia, and we're gonna delete that. So. Uh, we're going to delete that email and then we're going to move our bolt cutters one slot to the left uh, because that makes it easier later when we get the fuse to move to the fuse and use the fuse. So if I go back just a second, because magic. Um, there you go. I deleted the email from Mia, which is just clutter. And I uh, moved over the bolt cutters. Uh, and that's because, if, if you don't know, uh, your time doesn't stop in this game when you open up your inventory. If you have your inventory up, uh, the game keeps running. So we use any downtime we can to try and fix up our inventory and prepare for the next section so that um, we, you know, we're, we're as quick as we can be in terms of, like, already being on top of the item that you need. Oh, important, your cursor stays in the same spot, too. So, um... We use that to our advantage. I, I really hope they keep that feature in Resident Evil 8. So, yeah. This is basically an auto-scroller. I could skip through this, but I'm trying to think of what I'm going to have to explain next. Um, but also, it's going to be really amusing to watch as, as former self gets, like, super stressed throughout this run. <laughs> yeah, it, they, I mean, they've been saying it's going to be one of their longest games, so it might be uh, pretty rough. All right, what's your what's your time, bro? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be as in-depth as possible. So if you have any questions or anything, or if you're like, what the fuck did I do there? Because I, I have this habit of, like, not really realizing that something might seem strange, you know, like you'll just see it. Um, but basically we're just, we're just pissing away time here. I yeah. I mean, the, the way I learned was by watching other people run, asking questions in their chat, talking to the community and then just playing the game myself, you know? So it's definitely possible. Uh, right now we're going to be a football player and squeeze through this door. So, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to wait at this wall and you have to wait past a certain point. So what I try to do usually is I line up my camera. So like two thirds of it are past the pillar. So you'll see like the pillar starts there and we're, we're sort of like in the field of view. Uh, you'll know you're in the right spot because Ethan like puts his hand up against the wall. Once he puts his hand up against the wall, you're, you're pretty much good to go. Um, what we're going to do here and you won't really be able to hear it. 
is we're gonna wait for an audio cue. It's it's really really quiet. It's easy to miss. Um, and after Mia says her last line, there's about two seconds, and then you'll hear a piano, and it goes like dun dun. And when it hits that last note, if you count four seconds, that's when Mia gets taken away. So what we're gonna try to do, and and it works out pretty well, is uh, wait to hear that sound, count to four. Uh, I, I usually just do it out loud because that way I don't like count fast because it's easier to count fast in your head. And uh, as soon as we hit four, we turn to the left because Mia's going to get taken. And that way we're already chasing after Mia and you'll know we did it right if we see a shadow on the right side of the room. Like, it's like a weird sort of glitch. You just see like the light flicker and there's a weird shadow and that's how you know that that's, that's pretty much as fast as you could possibly go. So... We're going to see that. I mean, it's a small optimization, obviously, but if you waste time around here, it, it stacks up later in the run, so saving time early on is usually pretty critical. So we counted, we turned to the left. Like, for a frame, there was a black shadow, and now we're running up the stairs. Mia was taken, we know, we heard her scream. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to dip into the bathroom and turn around right in the door frame. You, you barely need to go into the bathroom um, and whip around and come back down the stairs so that we can start our fun little Mia 1 cutscene. Um, again, like a lot of this is down to movement optimization. You want to stick to the wall that you're going to be turning into when, when you can. Um, you want to like try and take a straight line to everything. You never want to like go on the outside path and come around and stuff. Um, but that, that sort of just comes with playing the game. Uh, you'll, you'll figure out what objects you can or can't bump into and which, which cost you time. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to run at Mia, which, uh, is sort of counterintuitive and that just speeds this sequence up by about two seconds. Uh, if you don't run it, run it, or it actually wastes some time, uh, just, it just puts her into her animation. Uh, yeah, I think there's a one hit Mia in this. Um, yeah. So. We've been stabbed, Mia's gonna do her head headbanging thing, and we're gonna do a pretty specific trick here. I have a very specific, uh, <laughs> a, a, a repost, 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 um, <laughs> oh, that's, that's all good, man, no, wor no worries, um, so yeah, she's gonna do her head bash thing, she's gonna pass out. When she passes, passes out, uh, we have to be standing in a pretty specific spot in order to wake her up at the optimal time. Uh, the optimal time is about 10 seconds. So from the time that she's on the ground to, uh, or rather from the time that we get control of Ethan to when she gets up should be almost exactly 10 seconds. You know you messed it up if it's more than 10 seconds. If it's more than 10 seconds, you have to move forward or backwards and you're, you're going to lose time guaranteed. Um, so my setup is pretty specific. Uh, it only works if you're playing on 90 FOV which I think actually makes it, um, uh, welcome back, Dom. Uh, I think that makes it PC exclusive. I don't think you can change the field of view in, uh, on console. So I play at 90 FOV. It makes setting up this trick really easy. What you're going to see me do is nudge forward after I gain control of Ethan. I'm not going to touch the mouse. I, my hand won't be on the mouse at all because if you change the angle of where you're going with the mouse, it makes it a lot harder to set this trick up. And I'm just going to nudge myself forward until the bottom of her left shoe is at the very bottom of my screen and um the reason for that uh, the reason for the 90 fov thing is because if you're at any lower uh the bottom of her shoe is going to be further down because your field of view is closer so 90 fov is sort of relevant to this uh <laughs> thanks for the bits <laughs> um the uh 90 fov is pretty relevant so that's what you're going to see me do here Yeah, dude, I would be down to do a collab commentary. So the bottom of her shoe lined up with the bottom of my screen. It's exactly how it appears. Um, and then she gets up as soon as possible, which is great. Uh, now we're going to grab the axe as soon as possible. Oh, that's as simple as looking to the right as you're getting thrown and just mashing your uh, interaction keys. And what we're going to do here is you can get this in one hit. You can get it a lot quicker than I got it by about two seconds, actually. Um, which I guess isn't that much faster. Uh, what we want to do here is, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, don't, 
<laughs> Don't get too close. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to hit Mia in the legs with the two strong attacks. We always want to be using strong attacks. Uh, the strong attack is when you hold the right click button and you press the left click button. If you press the left click button alone, you're doing a weak attack and it's not it's not going to end well for you. So uh, what we want to do is we want to get two really nice strong attacks into our legs and then we want to uncrouch and as soon as we uncrouch we want to start blocking. Uh, if you don't block, Ethan is going to punch Mia in the face like three, two or three times. And besides wasting time, it's just kind of it's just kind of rude and excessive. So if you if you just mash the space bar during that segment, uh, you won't punch me in the face. I think you could actually just hold it the space bar, but I, I mash it to be safe. So here we go. So we got our first hit, our second hit, and then we're mashing space. We do the struggle, and the fight's over. You can get that a little bit more optimal, where you go into the little struggle a lot quicker, and then you swing almost immediately. Saves about like one and a half to two seconds. Um, but it's, it, you know, I don't, I don't mind missing that. It almost feels like RNG, to be honest. And it might be FPS dependent. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for the lurk, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So we're going to answer the phone. Uh, you saw me do a minor thing where I stood... Uh, let me go back. Oops. Let me go back. Fucked it up. Let me go back. Back. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand as close to the phone as I can without standing too close to the phone. And that's because I know I need to get to the phone as soon as possible. But if you stand too close to the phone, like if you're right on top of it, it won't start ringing. Um, so what I usually do is I line the bottom of my screen up, much like the Mia trick. The bottom of your screen is just an easy visual indicator. Um, I line it up with that shadow of the little cupboard. And um, I basically wait about three seconds. I, I, I've never actually timed it, but I probably should. It's like three or four seconds. Uh, so you move bottom of the screen, you move to the left a little bit. And then as soon as the phone starts ringing, you're fucking on top of it, uh, which is, you know, pretty good. Wow, we're only 11 minutes into this run and we're 30 minutes into this. This is going to take me forever. I mean, it's going to be thorough. Okay, so what we're doing is, um, I should have mentioned, when we killed Mia 1, uh, we had her go down in the hallway. It's pretty much necessary because otherwise you have to run into this room. Like, if she goes way deep in there, you can lose a good few seconds because you have to run all the way into the room. You have to run out. Uh Getting Mia to fall down in the hallway is mostly a matter of facing the right way when you go into that final animation. So as long as you're facing towards the hallway and you're not facing off to the left or off to the right, like off towards those uh, chairs or towards the bookcase, you're, you're pretty much good. It's, it's kind of hard to mess up, but it, I mean, it happens to me all the time, so I, I shouldn't say that. So we're going to grab the axe because it's in the perfect spot. And we're coming up on our second retry, and once again, this is just to get our running speed back. Um, what you're going to see is this is going to be our first use of an actual item. Uh, we're going to use the bolt cutters to get to the fuse. Uh, you're going to see me whip to the right a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this commentary speed run is terribly, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not wrong. This is terribly unoptimized. So we whip to the right and, um, but I guess that's what you would want. I don't know. Um, so we whip to the right and immediately we press our interaction keys. It's important in this game to have two keys bound for interaction. It just speeds everything up. You can mash a lot faster. And when you're interacting with objects, it, it makes it a lot more convenient. I use F and Q. I know a lot of other people use E and Q. I've also seen people use F and 5, which is like, I don't know what kind of spider hands you might have. Um, and so basically we, we turn to the right and we press F and Q. And ideally, we kind of like whip into the animation and I got it pretty good here. You can get it a tiny bit faster. It's like, you know, fractions of a second. And um, we open up our, our little cabinet, and then we open the cabinet. So we, we're mashing F and Q the whole time. And then I move to the right a little bit, so that way I'm a little bit farther from the fuse. I pick it up, and we're on our way. Uh, you're going to see me whip around, and I'm going to put the fuse in there. Uh, the reason we were able to do that is because we had our... Uh, 
our bolt cutters next to our fuse. So as soon as we opened up our inventory to interact with that item, all we had to press was D and F. So, or, so basically we whip to the right, we press F, D, F, and we're done. We can go. So a lot of this game is about minimizing the amount of time that you need to have your inventory open when you're interacting with stuff. You basically want to have it so you can be mashing your interaction keys and interact with most things. Um, what you're going to see me do here, and you're going to see me do it a lot in this run, and I should explain it now, it's called a door boost. Um, I close doors on myself uh, when they're facing inward. I mean, like, ideally, I don't close a door on my face, although it has happened many times. Um, but uh, as we're running through this door, we're going to kind of, like, turn to the right just a tiny bit, so that way we can close the door on ourselves. It pushes us ahead a, a little bit. If you fuck it up, you're going to shut yourself out, and it's not that's not good. Um, so little door boost, uh, yeah, you'll barely notice it most of the time. Sometimes I'll get it really good and you'll clearly see me get like violently pushed forward. Um, but, uh, yeah, now we're doing our little cutscene. Uh, since this is the censored version, it's a, uh, fork through the arm instead of a screwdriver through the hand. Uh, the censored version saves 25 seconds. If you're watching this, you probably already are aware of that. <laughs> Oh, God, I've been like talking too much. My jaw hurts. Did my flashlight turn on there? Screen goes black. We uh, don't get our arm chopped off, which is kind of lame. Admittedly, kind of lame. And we're on to Mia 2, which is arguably uh, one of the hardest... Uh, boss fights in the game to do optimally, I guess. Um, a lot of people don't have problems with it. Some people have infinite problems with it. I go through like periods of where it's fine and then it's not. Uh, you're going to see me move my inventory spot over. That's because in the next section, we want to be in the first slot because the item that we get will be in our first slot since we have an empty inventory. So we're just preparing for like, like 15 minutes from now. Uh, you're going to see me climb up this ladder and then immediately climb down. And what I do here is I line myself up with that dot. And the reason I open my inventory up is because your cursor will always be, if you're on PC, your cursor will always be centered, dead center on your screen. So it gives you a good visual indicator um, of like where you are positioned according to different objects in the room. That dot is never going to move. That's that's a texture. So you're, you're good to use that as a visual reference of where you can safely stand. If you stand too close, Mia's going to jump down and you're going to topple over and it's not good. Um, if you stand too far, you won't be able to get close enough to her that you can do the damage that we need to do. Um, what we're going for here is a one hit Mia. Uh, it's where you move into her legs and you swing at the arm that holds her chainsaw. The hardest part about this is not really the positioning. It's more, um, the timing. You want to wait like a tiny bit, like once she kind of starts getting up before you swing and you'll see me sort of delay my swing so i like crouch down and i wait for a second and then i swing um you can do it a tiny bit faster but it's almost safer to wait a second uh, if you swing too early she'll run off in some fucking random direction and it's it's just a nightmare it ruins the run it's a guaranteed reset it's a bad night um <laughs> so here you go i'm lined up i run forward swing at her axe arm and she's down that's a one hit mia we're done we're good. She loves us. That's great. Uh, I like to play with her ragdoll physics, so um, I do this. Here we go. Pretty good. Um, I've seen better. So right now, uh, this is a pretty good pace for me. Um, there, there are a few things that could have been better. I could be like a couple seconds up, realistically. Uh, the reason I wave my camera around here is you'll hear a sound when Jack comes up to the, uh, Jack comes up to the, oh, see you later. See you later, past me. Um, you'll hear a sound, oh, we have the same chair. Um, you'll hear a sound when Jack comes up to the attic, and once you hear that sound, you have to just, you can just whip your camera around. It's easily the best way to get him to, uh, come to you. Uh, as long as you're not standing near a wall, and as long as you're not moving. If you're moving or you're standing near a wall, 
uh, it doesn't always work consistently, so it's best to just kind of stand there and, and wave your camera around like a madman. Hmm. You're back. Welcome back. <laughs> so now we're going into the famous, uh, famous cutscene. Uh, I guess this is a good time to explain the part that is coming up next. Um, what's going to happen is Jack's going to be in the hallway. Uh, he's going to be leaning near the uh, window. Um, and what we want to do is we want to slip past him and grab the key that's right on the end table, right past him. And we want to make our way down the hallway and we want to look and interact with the door at the end of the hallway. Uh, the reason we want to do that is because it sets a trigger in this game. This game is really trigger happy. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I guess trigger dependent would be a better way to phrase it. Um, we, we, need to, we need to hit a few triggers in the game. Uh, one of them is looking at the door. That tells the game, I guess, that we've explored all the areas. And so, therefore, it allows the next part of the progression to happen. If you don't look at that door, uh, the officer doesn't come to the window. Uh, so, basically, the game wants you to look at that door. So, that way you're like, oh, shit, I need another item. Um, so, if you do that early, it counts it. So, you're going to see a slip past Jack. Uh, you can get a skip here called wall skip. It saves about like five, maybe six seconds in total if you get it like super optimally. Um, I know for a fact that I've never gotten it super optimally. So I don't really try to perform it in a run, especially if I'm like on a decent pace because I know more than likely it's going to cost me time or potentially just kill the run um, if it goes poorly enough. Um, so I'm not going to go for that in this run. I've already acknowledged it in most of my runs i'm like we're not going for wall skip uh sometimes i'll say if it presents itself because sometimes the setup for it it works out really well uh and i'll go for it but for the most part i don't so we wiggle out of the chair uh yeah i mean it's it's kind of rare because the setup for it is so oddly specific um and if you're not positioned in quite the right place he's not going to do the right thing and it's going to make it either difficult to do or suboptimal even if you do it. So, uh, what I do there, and I'll explain my setup for this a little bit, because I, I only recently discovered it and it's pretty consistent. So as we're walking down the hall, we're mostly bumped up against the right side. And we're already kind of looking into the corner, right? Uh, when we reach that picture frame, that picture frame is my visual indicator that I should look to the left. When I, see, when I get to that picture frame, when I'm approximately on top of it, I whip my camera to the left and then back to the right. You don't want to be standing in the middle of the hallway when you run into Jack. If you do that, he's going to grab you. He might grab you twice. It, it, it's going to be really bad. It's going to be messy. Um, so the best way to do this that I've found is you stick to the right side of the wall. You whip your camera to the left when you pass the picture frame. And then you keep sticking, like pushing into the corner, basically. So that way you can turn that corner as fast as possible. And we don't have to bump into the Jack. In, into Jack, into the Jack. Um, so let's see, let's see how it goes. So he did his swing, we grabbed our key, he didn't hit us, we looked at the door, and now we're making our way past Jack. And that was, that was as good as I've really ever gotten it, I guess. I mean, I've gotten it a little bit better. But um, we made it past Jack, and now we're gonna go interact with this hatch door. Um, I like it when he stays at the back end of the hallway, because that means he's probably not gonna grab you, and he's probably not gonna hit you either. So you can usually just squeeze past him. Uh, sometimes you have to crouch, sometimes you have to block, but usually it's pretty safe if you're doing it uh, the way I did it. So now we do this. Uh, there's a skip you can get here called Phone Skip. It requires 300 FPS or more. I don't get 300 FPS or more even when I'm not streaming, so there's no chance I don't really go for it. Um, but basically, instead of having to go to this door, the phone would immediately ring. Um, and we would just save like two seconds. Um, it's pretty annoying that it's like hardware dependent, right? So we're going to answer this phone call and now we're going to get our new game plus items. Um, you're going to see me basically mash through the inventory to pick up as many items as I can. I use the mouse to help center me because normally you have to go one to the left to get into the item box, but instead I just mouse click a few times and that puts me in the center. And then I can just press F and Q, which are my interaction keys to pick up all my shit. Uh, we're going to brush up against this wall. 
And since we looked at the door all the way at the end of the hallway, um, this is going to trigger the officer. You have to brush up against that wall. Sometimes you have to, like, bump the corner. So, uh, like, you know, you can experiment with it. Uh, if the officer doesn't spawn and you already looked at the door, it's because you didn't go deep enough or you didn't bump into the wall. Woo! God, I feel like I'm talking so fast, but there's so much to explain. <laughs> okay. So... We're coming up on Jack 1. Uh, it's the first boss fight, I guess, of the game. Although in New Game Plus, it's pretty it's pretty trivial. Uh, what we're going to do is... Uh, actually, I, I don't need my headphones on, do I? Um, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go straight into sawing Jack after our officer friend, or uh, deputy, uh, gets uh, decapitated. Um... We're going to loop around him. I usually pick up the uh, G17 then. You don't have to. You can wait till the end of the fight and pick it up then. It really it doesn't make any sort of time difference at all. I just do it out of habit. I've always done it, and that's just the way, that's just the way it is. Um, so we're going to go to the garage. We are going to uh, open our, our little door with our pocket knife. And uh, we are going to head into Jack 1. Um, yeah, so we're going to saw him, and then we're immediately going to make our way around the back of the car. Um, we want to do this because we want to pull Jack into that driver's side door. Um, basically, what he's going to do is he's going to break that shelf to our right, and um, he's going to stumble into the driver's side door if we do everything correctly. So we go straight into sawing Jack. We're going to turn a little bit and pick up our gun. We're going to pull out our Albert. We're going to go around to the back of the car. We're going to shoot Jack. Sometimes it takes two shots because of his iframes. He's going to open up the door. What we're going to do now is we're going to wait until he starts driving. And I find it helps to wait as late as you possibly can before he starts crashing. And then we're going to pop him in the face. It's a pretty tricky shot. Um, and you have to do it with enhanced ammo. So you saw me switch to enhanced ammo. Um, which, which we can do because of the infinite ammo. And uh, now we just uh, wait. I gotta explain some shit. A lot, a lot happened right there. So, you want to wait until Jack starts driving, but if you do it too early, he has iframes, and it's awful. You want to wait until Jack starts driving, and then you want to pop him in the face. So, I wait sort of as late as I possibly can, because I've had bad luck with uh, shooting him too early, and, uh, and then we shoot him in the face. We're using the enhanced ammo, which you can see in the lower right-hand corner. Um, we switched to that when we were coming around back of the uh, car. So we're going to pop Jack in the face. He's already down. No problem. Now we're going to do some serious inventory management. And everybody has a, has a different way of doing this. So uh, honestly, you can find a way that works for you and stick with it. Sorry. I'm used to this way. It's the way I'm going to use for the rest of my life. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, I'll just tell you the ultimate goal, and then we can watch it happen. We're going to delete all the items that we don't need. So that's every item that we pulled out in the uh, item box, other than the walking shoes, the circular saw, the Albert, and the infinite ammo. Um, you can delete those items. Since they're New Game Plus items, they return back to your item box, which we're going to use later to our advantage. Um, so you're going to see me delete all the extra items that we don't need in the run. I'm also going to rearrange my weapons because I like to have my weapons in uh, Albert, uh, Pistol, Circular Saw, and then Knife. Because 1, 2, 3 is the easiest for me, and that, that rhymed. So, here we go. We're deleting a bunch of shit, sending back to Item Box. Great. We're going to reload, and then we're going to come around here, and we're going to shoot Jack in his uh, foot, basically. And that just stumbles him. It's it's almost not even necessary. As long as you don't get grabbed here, it's it's totally fine. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, Jack goes down. Uh, we're gonna turn around here. Open up the, or uh, go up the ladder. Uh, you have to wait a second or two. It, it, it 
it almost feels like RNG how long it takes, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same amount of time each time. It just feels RNG. Um, and uh, we're going to climb up the ladder. What we're going to do here is we're going to do like a double interaction. So there's a little screw on the back of this item. We have to turn it. And then we also have to move the shelf to the right. You can do both of those things at once because once you start the interaction for the turning, it's just it's turning on its own. You don't have to sit there and look at it. So we're going to interact with this. We're going to move the shelf to the uh, right. And then once we're done moving the shelf, we're going to pick up the ox statuette. And that way we don't have to sit through either animation. We can kind of just put them together. And that's this is like the only time we actually do something like that. So I'm moving the shelf now. Um, you can already see me stressing out over there. Look at fucking stress. Um, we drop down. Uh, you're gonna watch me. I think switch back from the un uh, from the enhanced ammo. We don't want to use enhanced ammo uh, yet. We'll use it later, but we for the next section we want to be in regular ammo. It's very important. Um, it, it'll mess everything up if you're in enhanced ammo. So we're gonna use that. Uh, since we arranged our inventory in a specific way, we kept our um, uh, cursor over the first item slot, which is where the ox statuette went. So uh, we were able to immediately interact with this door, which is really helpful. Uh, you can go straight into the opening animation. And then uh, we're going to push through the door. Ideally, many doors in this game. Doors? Doors? Let me tell you about doors. Um, doors in this game, there's a few different kinds. Uh, that door, that double door, for example, you do not want to be pushing into it. If you're, if you're, like touching the door as it's opening and Ethan does his like hand pushing motion, you're going to lose a smallish to significant amount of time. Um, de sort of depending on how badly d you do it. Um, the ideal way to interact with most doors is to be standing as close as you can without touching them and then use your interaction keys to open the doors and then go through them once they start their opening animation. All those slow opening doors, you don't want to be touching them as you open them. Uh, for the most part. I, there's a few where it doesn't really matter, but it's a good general rule to keep in mind because you can you could lose a few seconds on some of these doors. Um, and, and add that up, you you got, you know, 10, 15 seconds just because your doors were shitty, you know. So we're going to grab that. Uh, that clock pendulum, you can interact with that and turn around. Um, I, like, it's a matter of feeling it out, really. But uh, you can you can really be liberal about how you how you turn around with that. Uh, you can interact and and sort of start walking away. Um, so this is a, a really minor optimization. It saves half a second uh, when you come into this room because we're coming here to get the dog head from that little book. Um, you can close the door behind you and it saves time because otherwise you have to walk around the door. It literally saves 0.5 seconds. I've timed it. Um, so what you'll see me do is I'll whip around and I'll turn the door, I'll, I'll turn around and close the door after I've opened it. Just so that way, when we come back through here in a second, uh, the door will already be closed and that just saves time instead of having to walk all the long way around the door. <laughs> so it's a really minor thing. So you see me interact with the book, get the dog head, walk back through the door, which we closed. And now we're going to begin out of bounds. So I'm going to interact with the tub to get the uh, wooden statuette and immediately turn around. Jack's going to bust through this door. Um, this is this is probably one of the hardest sections in the in the game. I mean, like save maybe like a few frame perfect tricks on boss fights, maybe. But um, this is it, it takes a while before you really start to get a feel for this. And it's one of those things that you might learn it one way, but there's usually a more optimal way that you don't know how to do. So there's always room for optimization on out of bounds for the most part, unless you're like Rossi, um, like pretty much everybody else on the leaderboard could slightly improve their uh, out of bounds. Um, it's, it's not necessary to a run. You don't have to do it. Uh, it, but it, it does save a pretty substantial amount of time. And if you're looking to compete on the leaderboards, especially like in the top 10, even the top 20, you want to be including uh, out of bounds in your runs. So we're going to trigger Jack here. He's going to throw us back. We're going to immediately aim at his leg and you can kind of like aim in the middle of his leg for some reason. It's like the hitbox extends between his knees. Um, 
and we're going to shoot him. And that's going to bring him to his, uh, that, that's going to make him kneel. And when he kneels, uh, we can squeeze around him. If you miss this shot, there's a sort of backup strat, but it can mess everything up from this point forward because out of bounds is one of those tricks where everything sort of has to go right in, in a sequence in order for it to actually work. So I shoot him in his knee. I walk around. We're going to drop down here. Um, we're going to do two shots. Everybody has a different setup for this. I've seen everybody do it a million ways. I've seen people do shots in the dining room. I've seen people do like shots while they're upstairs. I've seen, I've seen just about everything. Um, I do two shots. I usually aim for one towards the garage and one towards the dining room, but I don't shoot when I'm in the dining room. In my experience, it makes him come into the dining room and he'll break this beautiful dining room table. And it, besides being like rude, doesn't save any time. So we don't want to break in dining room table. Uh, I'm going to come here since my inventory is in the right spot. We immediately interact with the clock. We grab our dog head. We turn around. We're, we're trying to go as fast as we can here because Jack has dropped down now. Jack is right behind us, right? So what we want to do is we want to run down this hallway. And at the end of the hallway, we're going to turn around and we're going to stagger Jack. And the reason for that is because if Jack is too close and you get to the eagle statue part, which is what we need to get to, um, you won't be able to interact with the eagle statue. It'll say, now is not the time for that, and the run is dead. That's a, that's a run killer. There's no way to resurrect. Like, there are backup strats, but you're going to be losing 40 seconds. In a PB situation, it's not, it, it's not an acceptable solution. So uh, I turned around to make sure Jack was following me, because sometimes I'm not sure. Uh, he's following me. We're going to whip around, take our shot. Now we got to go fast. You can see my face. Look at, look at, look at, <laughs> what face. Yes. Uh, okay. So we interacted. We made it. Uh, <laughs> I was so stressed. I was so stressed. It only gets worse as the run goes on. We're only 24 minutes in. Um, so I take a few shots in here. I don't think it really does anything. It's just like for, for shits. Um, we're going to pull Jack up the stairs. Um, you can do this on the left or the right side of the staircase. I used to do it on the right. I've had better luck lately on the left. It's like it changes week to week. I don't know. Fucking secret patches. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to pull Jack up here. Um, we're going to take one shot in his leg. This is a very sketchy shot. If for some reason this shot registers, but... J uh, Jack doesn't do his uh, his kneel his what is if Jack doesn't take a knee if when we take this shot and we have to take a second shot it'll kill Jack and and out of bounds is fucked it's a reset so we take a shot I missed my first shot but at least I didn't hit him and have it register but he didn't kneel he took his knee we're gonna squeeze through this is another situation where we're gonna want to drop our FPS to thirty. Um, this helps us squeeze past Jack. You can do it without dropping your FPS. Um, it, it just takes more time IRL to like, or sorry, it takes more time in game to squeeze through him without dropping your FPS than it does to drop your FPS, even though it takes more time IRL to drop your FPS because you have to go into your menu. Does that make sense? Probably not. So I'm going to change my FPS to 30. Here we go. Change it back to variable. Uh, we never want to run in 30 for too long because every second that you're running uh, 30 FPS, you're actually losing like a fraction of a fraction of a second. It's crazy. The game engine is tied to FPS and move speed and shit like that. So that's how it is. I don't know. Uh, we're going to stand in a very specific spot here. This is something that you kind of have to feel out. You can use this little uh, scratch mark. This scratch mark never changes. It's always like that. Um, you can sort of use that as an indicator, and you should always have that pillar sort of in that position on the right side of your screen. If you're at 90 field of view, this will change if you're at a different field of view or if you're playing on console. And what's going to happen is Jack's going to grab us. You saw that weird glitchy animation. That's how you know we're, we're fucking good. Sometimes Jack will throw you down the stairs. Sometimes he'll throw you, like, into that wall. It can go many, many wrong ways. Out of Bounds is a very tough trick to practice. Um or to optimize, but it's also a very uh, frustrating drink to practice because sometimes you don't know what you're doing wrong and it's just not working for you for whatever reason. 
Um, and sometimes it'll go right 10 times in a row, and then you mess it up once. Um, as soon as uh, we get thrown out of bounds, which is right now, we're going to be holding... I, I do S and D to make myself move backwards and to the right. I've heard other people do different things. This is just what works for me the best, so I do it. Uh, so we turn around as we hold S and D, and we're sticking to a very specific line. If you cut in too close to this house, you're going to load what I call uh, the dark zone. Um, the way this game works is depending on the area that you're in, it's the nightmare zone. Uh, depending on the area that you're in, uh, there's sort of uh, different load zones that you'll trigger. And if you're standing too far to the left, and you sort of clip through the building part of the house... Uh, you'll load a, a bad place. It's a scary place because everything turns dark. You'll know you fucked up if everything turns dark. Um, once you're in the dark zone, you can save it. If you turn around and touch the wall and then take the, the correct line where you kind of like stay away from the house, you, you will load the normal zone, like this, this area. Uh, it's sort of something that I recommend playing with. Uh, it's worth it to go out of bounds once you figure out how to get out of bounds and really just tinker with it and feel it out and see what works because um, one thing that really improved my ability to go out of bounds is is literally just messing around with it and saying like, what can I do when I'm out of bounds? And, and you can go in any different direction. We only do one thing out of bounds. You can get the crank out of bounds. You can get the D-series arm out of bounds. You can get the D-series head out of bounds. They're, they're all soft locks, but you can do it. Um, so... You're going to see me take a very specific line, and then we're going to drop down. Um, again, this is all very movement-specific. Uh, you'll see me, I'm lining up my crosshair with a specific spot. I like to line it up with those, like, beams that stick out. And we're going to turn to the left, and we're going to stay more to the right than to the left. If you stay too close to the left, you're going to fall into the ceiling, and you're going to get caught in the ceiling, and it's going to put you back at the start of Out of Bounds, which, um, you know... It's, it's not the worst outcome, I guess. Like, it would be worse if it put you, like, back inside the house and you had to go back out of bounds. Like, you're still out of bounds. But, um, you know, it, it's, not, it's not what we're going for. But uh, it gives you a good chance to practice this if you mess it up. So we're going to go here, and we're basically walking on the seam between two rooms. That's why everything looks all fucked up on the left side of us. We're, we're on the seam of a room that has not loaded in yet. And as we fall, the game is going to load in uh, the room. I've heard people have issues if they're playing uh, not on an SSD or if they're playing on an M.2 drive or not on an M.2 drive, uh, which I always play on, um, where basically the game doesn't load in in time and you fall and it's not good. You, you get reset back to your point. If you're having issues, my best recommendation is as you're falling, when you reach like right around this point that I paused at, uh, hit escape and wait like a couple seconds and see if that loads in this room to the right. If it loads in the room to the right, you're good to go. Now you can keep falling and, and you're, you're set. Um, that's the only advice I can give you. So we fall in, we grab the red key card, and now we're on our way. Hang on, I gotta grab another drink. We gotta, we gotta pause for a second. So we're, we're good to just blast this dude. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna blast him, and then we're gonna do this quick puzzle, which is pretty easy. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna open the Travis door, and we're going to grab the key as quickly as we can. We're going to make our way through. I did another quick uh, door boost there. And we're just uh, making our way down. We're heading on our way to uh, Jack 2. And we need to do Jack 2 so we can get the uh, red dog head. We're going to blast another molded there. I have to use uh, the, D but the D key to move my inventory one spot to the right there so I can get the key in. Um, yeah, unless you hit the wrong one. Yeah, it, it's actually really easy to hit the wrong one. Um, uh, we're going to come up here again. I'm sticking to the corners, tight movement, really important. And I'm going to interact with this as soon as I can. Now, um, Jack two has really brutal iframes. Um, there's a really important audio cue here. And, uh, that's, that's the main reason I play in Japanese. Um, so you'll hear him go like, Oh my, Oh, what do you know? Like he says a whole thing. When he says the mo part, that's when you know his iframes are good. Like the o part of mo, that's when you know you can shoot him in the face. So we're going to stand as close as we can to him, and then we're going to blast him in the face. I know for a fact 
that that's not going to work. We're going to fuck this up. So let's see what happens. He grabs us right away, which can happen if you're too late with the shot. I was just a little too late. Look at that face. Look at that face. Um, the thing is, in, this, in the past PB, I already stuffed this. Ideally, you shoot him in the face immediately and he goes down. I, I got like the second best scenario because you can get really brutalized by his iframes here. Um, I was able to take him down anyway, and he faced the fence, which is what we want him to do. Ultimately, we want him to be facing the fence because he's going to have to tear through the fence so we can get the chainsaw. So we blast him in the face. He goes down. Fortunately, that was our second shot. We, we didn't have to take any extra bullshit shots. He's opening the fence. We're right. We're good. So now we're going to do a quick inventory management. That's a tough one to figure out. Uh, we're basically just getting the dog heads in a row so that way we can easily toggle through the dog heads. Um, like I said, inventory management is a, it's a matter of user preference, you know, uh, you can do whatever works for you. That's just what works for me. Uh, it makes it easy for me to get through all the items quickly. So we're going to grab the chainsaw as is mandatory. Again, he has iframes here. You know, they're over when he like dips down a little bit. So you'll see his animation kind of end and he'll go like, boop, boop. So it's, it barely happened there, but trust me, it did. Um, and that's when you know we can shoot him in the face. And the last part is we're just going to take a saw to his uh, lumps and uh, explode him. And that's that's about that. We're going to come over here. At this point, I think I lost time. But then I'm going to see that we did not lose time at all. Look at that face. Look at that stupid face. Look at that stupid... Uh, you're an idiot. What are you doing over there? <laughs> Not my best okay. So at this point, <laughs> look at my baffled expression. Um, at this point, I've realized that now now we're on a really good pace and we have a pretty big chance for a PB. Um, yeah, and as Aragold is saying up there, I clearly had a really scuffed Jack 2 on my PB because the fact that that saved time is amazing. Um, we're going to come through here. Again, you saw me do another cheeky door boost. Uh, we're just going to grab the uh, scorpion key. This this part's all pretty mandatory uh, or pr pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, we just grab the uh, scorpion key. We're gonna go upstairs uh, since we did some inventory management when we were in the Jack Two fight. We're already ready to go for this door, and we can jump straight into interacting with it. We uh, go around Grandma. We interact with the door. We push through the door. This is a door that doesn't matter if you push into it. It's a it's just a slow as fuck door um so what we did there is as we were interacting with the dog heads we kept mashing our interaction keys and d so that way i could toggle through but i'm aware of that put that door a little bit sorry the loudest plane ever just flew overhead um, so that way we could, uh, toggle through the dog heads really quickly and get through that door as fast as possible. Again, you can bump into that door. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's always slow. Uh, we're going to make our way into the trailer. We're going to do a quick turn and just come barely out of the trailer so that it, uh, triggers the phone call. If you don't do that, the phone doesn't ring. So we want to get straight into this phone call. So we walk into the trailer, we immediately turn around and we're good to go. I'm going to vape at the same time as past me. Check this out. I've had in like three days. Take that. Um, so now we talk to Zoe. Good shit for now. We're not, we're not out of the woods yet. Still got, still got a lot of sections that we can just blow all the <sighs> So far, so good. I've been explaining the shit out of a lot of this, but I think from this point forward, it actually it gets a lot more straightforward where we're not doing as many tricks, but I'm still trying to be as thorough as we can. Um, I want this to kind of be my go-to if anybody ever asks, like, hey, do you have a, do you have a guide on Resident Evil 7 that I could follow? And I could be like, yeah, dude, check this out. Here you go. So, hello. Um, so we turn around, we leave the trailer. Um, I mean, a lot of this is, like, basic route stuff. If you know where to go, then you're, you're, you're just down to your own optimizations on movement and stuff. We're gonna interact with that gate as fast as we can, um... You can see my face. I'm starting to get really stressed now. <laughs> um, we're going to get in there. Nice little gold split. 
Uh, we're going to shoot that hive twice. We're going to try and shoot this one once, but we failed. So we have to take our G17 and do a bunch of quick shots and, and destroy it. So we lost a little bit of time there. Um, normally, what I would do is I would shoot... Please? Twitch. Uh, normally, what I would do is I would shoot the... Um, I would shoot that this hive that's in the uh, little crawl space. I would shoot that one once with Albert ammo, and then it only takes three shots with enhanced G17 ammo. So you can kind of do that as you're running, and you never have to actually aim down sights. You can just keep going. Um, that's the optimal way to do it, or that's that's the best way that I've found to do it. There's a couple other ways that I've seen people do it. I've seen people take a saw to it. Like, it's really sort of a matter of whatever works for you, and whatever you find saves the most time, and whatever you've gotten used to. Um, you know, although obviously everybody should just be following Rossi if we're being real. So, um, we're going to come through here. Uh, this is a pretty specific trick, uh, and the FPS trick that we're going to do here is obviously exclusive to PC, as I said before, but, uh, this trick itself isn't because you can, you could actually do this on console, uh, I believe. Um, and, uh, we, we took out our circular saw after grabbing that statue and, um, when there's spiders on our arms, we're going to touch our arms two times. We're going to go, ah! the second time we touch our arms, as soon as we put our hands on our arms, uh, we can drop our FPS down to 30. That makes getting this trick a little bit more consistent because what we're going to do is we're going to saw through the spiders and it makes it a lot quicker to get through this door. Um, otherwise, you could go around if you really wanted to or something like that, but uh, this is the fastest way to do it. Uh, so we're dropping our FPS. Uh... I accidentally pressed escape a second time there. We're going to raise our FPS back up. And we're on our way. So we made it right through that door. Um, you can do that without dropping your FPS if you really wanted to. It's just a little bit uh, unreliable. <laughs> I know, Aztec got us. The spiders, right? Um, so we're going to solve this uh, spider statue puzzle. Uh, these spider statue puzzles, it's a matter of figuring out... Um, what angle you have to, it, it, on PC, what angle you have to move your mouse to get it as quick as possible. Uh, with console, you actually have it a little bit easier because you can just hold the joysticks, uh, the uh, analog sticks. The joy, hold the joysticks, the old man says. Um, you can just hold the analog sticks in a specific direction, and uh, the uh, statue will always spin in the same way. So it makes it a little bit more consistent. Um on PC, we usually use the mouse to help us along, and then we can use the uh, directional keys, W, A, S, and D, to uh, sort of make any minor adjustments. So we're going to come down here. This is the one time that the walking shoes really pay off. Um, because we're crouched, we actually get the boost from the walking shoes, so that makes going through this little crawl space, like, I don't know, it's like six seconds faster. It's pretty fast. Uh, without the walking shoes, this, this part takes a little bit. Uh, and we're going to come through here. Since our inventory is already set up, uh, we we were in the right spot to use the wooden stat or the uh, the spider statue. And since we used the spider statue and we had an empty spot, when we picked up the crank, the crank filled that spider statue spot. So we were already in the spot that we needed to uh, to just go straight into using that crank. We didn't need to move our inventory at all. We had to we only had to manipulate once. Um, so let me explain a, uh, a little trick here. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty tough one. Uh, we can skip past this. Um, so we're going to finish off this nest using two and Albert enhanced shots. And the only reason that works is because we already gave it um, two shots earlier. So it's already weak. Um, so we're going to take two shots and that's dead. Marguerite is in the next room. She's in the kitchen. We're going to walk right past her. For some reason, she doesn't really seem to care, as long as you take a pretty specific line. The, um, the best advice I can give you is beeline it right to the radiator and then bump into the radiator a little bit. And once you bump into the radiator, then just stick to the wall. And it, basically, as long as you don't touch her, you're good. Um, it looks pretty, pretty weird because she's like walking right in front of us. Like she's right there. She's literally right there. Like she would have seen us come right through the door. Um, so we just squeeze right by. No problem. It's really annoying if she spots you, she sends flies after you. Costs quite a few seconds. Um, so we shoot that little fly because sometimes he can be a nuisance. We jump straight into interacting with this, and we're good to go. We're going to come across here, and um, we're going to move our inventory spot over to where we know the, uh, the crow key is going to end up. 
Uh, the only reason I know it's going to end up in that specific spot, it's not going to end up in our first spot, is because we're going to pick up a health juice right over here. You don't have to do this. Um, in fact, there's no reason I should have done it in this specific run, because I, my health was fine. Uh, I just like to do it for safety. I don't know. Habit. Whatever. So we're going to pick up the health juice as we come through the door, and then we're going to grab the crow key, and we're going to turn around. We're going to use the health juice, and we're going to keep going. So our cursor in our inventory, just so we're keeping track, is already over the crow key. The next item that we use will be the crow key. Um, and that's that's just something that you have to keep in mind when you start speedrunning this game. The inventory management, like I said, it's a, it's a whole separate boss fight, and it goes on for the whole game. So it's, it's definitely a boss fight that you want to get good at. Um, we get our little Marguerite jump scare. She's going to throw us in the pit. Um, the way I do this is I do one shot with the Albert first, and then I do three shots of enhanced ammo with the G17. Or rather, all of it is enhanced ammo. But one shot with the Albert, three shots with the G17. You can start shooting her the second you get up. So for this whole segment, you should already be aiming at her, and you should already be pressing your mouse button. So as soon as you can, you shoot her. Like, he, like Ethan literally just pulled out the gun, and he's like, bam! You know, like, what a badass. And then we pull out our uh, G17, we take our three shots, I know she's already dead. She's already dead. We're good. So we can start climbing up the ladder, we get to see her fall. It's great. And we're good to go. And now we're going to interact with the crow door. Perfect. We're already on top of our crow key, like I said. And we're uh, good to go. So we're going to open this. We're going to look at the ground. Um, this just helps me line it up a little bit. So I'm going to move back a little bit. Because you can interact with this like a few steps back. And that just makes it easier to get to this phone call. Saves like a fraction of a second. Um, you know, you don't have to do it. But that's why I did it. <laughs> What's up, Top Hatter? Welcome back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Now we're going to answer the phone call. We're about to go into a... Um, this is one of the last phone calls we have to answer, by the way, fortunately. Um, we're about to go into a, a really difficult... Um, a really difficult skip. It's hard to learn. It's called Lantern Skip. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ceiling in a specific spot. It just so happens that this spot that we look at is the ceiling uh, right below where the lantern door is. So there's a lantern door. If we walk up to, and to the left and around, we'll, we'll get to that soon. Uh, there's a lantern door up there. Normally, the game wants you to look at the lantern before you can proceed to the next segment. Um, it's another one of the game's triggers that it requires for you to proceed to the next section. If we didn't do this, the game would be softlocked. We couldn't go into the pit. We couldn't fight Marguerite 2. We can't do shit. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to come down the stairs. You're going to see me look at the ceiling in a specific spot. And I'll pause again when we get there. Um, and then once we do that, we're going to basically walk the plank. And I mean walk, because if you run off this plank, you will mess this trick up. Um, let's see. Yeah. So right about here, uh, usually I aim like a little bit higher, like right right about here, like if you can see with my cursor. Um, usually I would, I would aim right about here. As long as you're across from here, you're pretty much good. Like this, this little breakery, breakage, breakery, what the fuck am I saying? Um, <laughs> this little breakage area is where the, uh, where the, uh, visual indicator is that I use. And then I kind of just aim for this crack here. Um, so this works. We're good. <laughs> the breakery? <laughs> Aztec's like, oh god. <laughs> He's already drunk. Um, now we're gonna walk the plank. Uh, this is another thing where you want to line yourself up. See this little gap here? I try and line myself up right there. Uh, I think it's going great. I don't know. I, how, do you, how do you guys think it's going in chat? I, I, I would like some feedback. Is it, is it bad? Is it good? Am I taking too much time? Is it boring? Is it too long? Too short? Am I not explaining enough? Am I talking too fast? Um, we're gonna... Uh, oh, that's good. Minecraft Steve Shield Hype. Hell yeah. Um, we're gonna walk off right here. Uh, this is the area... Thank you. Thank you, Tana Banana. <laughs> thank you, Top Hatter. Um... We're going to aim right about here and uh, walk off the edge. I tap on the W key as I do this. If you run off this edge, you're going to mess this skip up. Don't ask me why. The game requires you to walk off the edge slowly. If we do it right, and you'll know you did it right, we'll hear Marguerite growl, which unfortunately you won't hear here because I have the volume down really low. Um, let me just turn it up real quick. 
Um, we'll hear Marguerite growl, and that's how you know I got it right. And you'll see her do her lantern grab animation, and she'll be walking down the corridor. If you mess this up, you fall in the pit, you have to climb up the ladder, and then you have to drop back down. It's uh, <laughs> Aztec Goddess. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Um, so we, we want to get this perfect. If you mess this up, it's like 10, 15 seconds. It would burn all of our time. Messing this up is a reset. So, uh, oh, let's go. Yes. Okay. Okay. You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't really hear the sound, but, um, basically Marguerite does a, does a nice little growl. That's how we know we got the skip right. And then we can continue on down this hole. Um, if you mess this up, You'll come into this house, and Marguerite won't be there, and you're softlocked. There's nothing you can do. You can retry, but, you know, the run is dead at that point. Um, we're going into March 2. This is a pretty specific fight, and you're going to see me do um, some some sort of difficult maneuvers. Uh, there's several ways you can you can come into this fight. Um, I, I sort of pick, like, the Ross Rossi way, which seems to be optimal for me. Um, so, hang on. Let's go back. So, we're going to come into here. Uh, you're going to see me climb up the steps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger uh, Marguerite and take a step back right after. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> you're watching me play with myself. Great. Um, <laughs> uh, so, we're going to come up the steps. And uh, we're only going to walk as far as we need to to trigger Marge. As soon as she pops through, we need to take a step back. If you don't take a step back... She will grab you, and that that is not good. That's pretty bad. She's going to run off to some other part of the house. We're going to have a huge problem. You, you really don't want it. So we're going to take a step back straight away, and then we're going to pop her in the face uh, two times. And it's pretty important to hit these shots. They may seem inconsequential. It might seem like it doesn't matter. But if you mess these shots up, she goes into an extra phase, and it becomes a whole other boss fight that we have to deal with. And it, it, it's, it's a really bad way to waste time. So we're going to take our steps up and then we're going to take a step back. We're going to shoot her in the face. We're going to start sawing her. And then as she backs out of the window at the last possible second, we're going to take another shot at her face. Then we're going to turn around and we're going to look straight down. And as we come down these steps and come into this next area, we're going to keep looking down. And that's going to make her spawn in the ceiling up above us. So when we come to these like broken planks here, that's that's my visual indicator right there. We know we're in the right spot, and we can turn to the right and look up. And Marge is going to appear in the ceiling above us. So, boom, there she is. We're going to shoot her once in the head, and then once in the neck. Or, or, once in the nest, sorry. Once in the head, once in the nest. The nest shot is pretty hard to hit. You can hit the wood instead of her nest, and it's it, it, it fucks the whole thing up. Uh, much like missing those first two shots, it fucks the whole thing up. And it becomes a whole nother boss fight. Um, so she's going to drop down here and we're going to immediately start sawing her and standing in a specific position. So we're standing sort of diagonal to her. Uh, a good, a good way to like position yourself is you should be facing directly across from those blue barrels. So she's going to jump back into those blue barrels. We stop sawing. Do not saw her when she's jumping. If you saw her when she's jumping, she's going to fall down on the ground and, like, wiggle around and stuff. And it wastes time, and it's it's just, like, shitty animation. I don't like it. So, um, we're going to saw her nest now that she has stopped jumping. And she's dead. That's it. That's Marge 2. Done. Nice and quick. You know she's dead when she, like, kind of, like, juts forward and gets on her knees. Um, and, uh, yeah. Now we just wait for the lantern to spawn. We're going to grab the lantern. Uh, we did another small inventory manipulation there. Uh, let me just go back. Um, so, yeah, you saw her kind of, like, move forward when we killed her. Uh, I break this box because there's a first aid in there, but we don't actually need it. Uh, I deleted my running shoes because from this point on, as Ethan, we don't need the running shoes, so I just get rid of them. Saves, uh, we need that inventory slot in order to get both of the, red, uh, both of the key cards. So, um, grabbing the lantern. We're going to make our way here. Um, and we're also positioned right over the lantern because the next thing we're going to interact with is the lantern door. So we used that downtime to position ourselves for the next item. Um, so we're, we're going back to the old house and we're going to use the lantern on the lantern door. Okay. 
So far, so good. This is this is gonna be a longer stream than I had planned, but I I want it to be this this will be like my my reference guide when people are like, "What you got a tutorial?" I'll be like, "Yeah, dude." It's over there. It's over there. Check it out. I already made it. Don't worry about it. So we're coming up here again. Tight, tight movement. <laughs> Favorite movie and go. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to interact with the lantern door. What we did there is we interacted with the lantern door. And while we wait for this door to open, because there's a couple seconds of downtime, we move our inventory spot one to the right because we're going to get the D series arm, but we don't need to use it. So we don't want to be over that slot. We want to be over the slot where we're going to get the key because we're going to get the um, snake key next. Um, and we want that the snake key will be the next item that we need to actually interact with. So we wait here. Uh, this door pops open real nice every time you can bump into it. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I shot the ball, so we got ball skip. Um, that actually doesn't save any time. It's just a little stream meme. Uh, we're making our way through. Uh, this is a really creepy section if you're playing the game casually. And we shot the other ball, which is perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come across the left side. This is important. The side that you come in can't be the same as the side that you come out. That fucks everything up. Don't ask me why. Just does. Um, so we're coming in this way. We're going to mash our interaction keys and crouch. And sometimes if you come through that door, like right at the right time, you get a little speed boost. I didn't get it there, but uh, sometimes you'll see it. It's almost like a run speed boost for like half a second. Um, saves a fraction of a second, you know, it's, it's really not major. Um, I think this is a gold split anyway, though, right? No. Uh, and then we come back through here. This is going to be um, our third retry, I want to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are you the needle? Sixth place on the RE leaderboards? Holy shit. Um, so <laughs> we're going to do another retry here. Um, this retry has nothing to do with run speed, at least as far as I know. This retry is purely because there's a molded on the other end of this door and um, we're going to manipulate his spawn because otherwise he has terrible iframes and he'll be invincible and, and you'll, you'll get caught up on him. And that's also the reason why we're coming out the left side when we went in the right side. If you go out the same way that you came in, the molded changes his animation and he'll probably be invincible for the first few frames that you see him. So we come out this way, we do our quick retry. We're continuing on. We shoot that guy in the head. If we messed that up, that guy would have been invincible. We would have shot him in the head. It would have done nothing. And we would have gotten stuck on him for like at least a second or two. Uh, I'm going to do some cheeky door boosts here. Uh, these are these are like the easiest to see, I think, because you, you clearly see me closing the door on myself. Um, and we're on our way. I call this section the cleanup section. Uh, because we're basically just going back to main house, finishing the last few things that we need to get, and uh, we'll be on our way to the Lucas area and the rest of the game. Um, which is nice, because I, I'm hoping that at some point I can relax a little bit on explaining stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to talk... Oh yeah, so Ball Skip is a, is a random RNG, frame perfect, uh, 1 in 5,762, I think. Uh, chance, um, basically shoot all three balls and you skip straight to the end credits. Um, it's, 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 you know, once in a million and no, I'm just fucked with everybody. Um, so <laughs> we're going to come through here. Uh, like I said, that was our last phone call when we were in the old house. What we're going to do here is we're going to trigger a phone call, but we don't have to answer it. Uh, you don't have to go into the trailer to trigger the, this phone call. For some reason, you can just touch the back end of the trailer. I think it has something to do with hitboxes. Like, I think the hitbox of the trailer extends too far back or some something like that. Um, <laughs> I got tan of banana. <laughs> the ball skip. Um, <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to we're gonna touch the uh, back of the trailer. And uh, that, that triggers the phone call. You'll know I got it because you'll A, see an autosave in the upper left, which is going to be really hard to see right now. And B, you'll um, see the phone icon, which you can actually disable or enable in settings. I recommend keeping it enabled just specifically for this part, because knowing that you got this, see how I got the phone icon? Knowing that you got this is really important. If you didn't get it, you have to turn around and do that again. And that's not fun. So uh, we know we triggered everything we need. 
we're ready to go and uh, grab the snake key, which is just a matter of getting down there and getting the snake key. There's nothing too, nothing too fancy here. This is just movement. Uh, we're reopening the doors. If you if you didn't close these doors earlier, these doors will still be open. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, if you do close the doors, the doors will be closed. Like, it, I'm so used to closing the doors that if I forget to close a door, I'll close the door on my face because I'm already planning on opening the door. Um, oh, shit. Wrong button. Um, this is our second, third, uh, FPS manipulation. Fourth? I don't know. Um, what we're doing here, uh, again, fuck, hang on. Trying to get, sorry. Trying to get to the perfect spot. Uh, is that Skyrim in the background? Uh, it's Elder Scrolls Online, uh, ESO. Um, so there's a four-legged molded that, uh, you're pretty close though. Uh, there's a four-legged molded that bursts out of this wall. On PC, you can drop your FPS to 30 and just skate past the molded. I don't know why it works. His hitboxes are weird. Um, so as soon as you reach the step, and you'll see as soon as I reach the step, I jumped into my menu and I dropped my FPS to 30. I'm just replaying this again for the fifth time. Uh, it's, it's a really easy trick. It's not hard to get at all. Uh, so as soon as I touch the step, I go into my FPS, drop to 30, squeeze past this guy, drop, uh, raise my FPS back up to variable, and then I go through this door. Um, <laughs> and then I grab the snake key, nice little gold split there, and I'm on my way. Probably more relaxing than this. Uh, and we're going to use the <laughs> snake key in this door uh, because we... Um, we already had our uh, inventory in the right spot, um, and we were just able to uh, use that. Uh, there's going to be a four-legged here. He has wicked iframes. I actually didn't kill him there, but he didn't attack us, so that's fine. Um, oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, we didn't kill the four-legged there. Uh, you can look down and kill him, but as long as he doesn't attack you, it's actually fine. Um, and we're on our way. So, even though we did out of bounds, even though we already have the red key card, uh, and we don't technically need to go down this way, we do have to solve this puzzle. If you do not solve this puzzle, you will softlock the game, and uh, the game won't let you progress past the Lucas section, which we really don't want to have happen in a PB. So, um, <laughs> we go into here, and we solve the easiest clock puzzle, that probably in the history of clock puzzles. Um, set it to 10, 15, or whatever, and we're out of here. I would love to become a VA. That'd be cool. Um, and we're coming in here. We're going to use the snake key one last time, and we did a quick, super quick inventory uh, management thing where we moved our cursor over one to the right um, just so that we were ready for the blue key card, which will be the next item that we use. So I uh, ran in there. I activated the ladder, and we're going to... Um, uh, interact with the statue, which, um, let me just go back, actually. Um, so, you can actually interact with this statue from anywhere, and it will always put you in the same location. Uh, it'll always put you in front of the blue key card. So, uh, what you'll see me do is I'll interact with this statue as far as I can, basically, um, in order to, uh, A, interact with it as soon as I can, and B, end up in the right location. So, I interact with it from there. Uh, this is the most annoying puzzle in the game. You just got to really feel it out. Like I said, it's easier on console than it is on PC. On PC, I go like up and then like left. It's, it's kind of wacky. Uh, and then we get put out on the right side and we can interact with the blue key card. Grab it. We're on our way. Um, and yeah. Man. So uh, we're going to the Lucas section. All we have to do is make it outside, and we're going to use our key cards on that little door outside. Um, that's about it. There's going to be a four-legged molded. Uh, we're going to shoot him, and I'm pretty sure he's going to die. This this one's not too bad with his iframes because you, you have a lot of time. This guy, I just ignore, and I move past. And then because our inventory is already set up, I can just go F, F, Q, F, D, F, and that uses both of the key cards and gets us through the door. Sounds a little complicated, 
But if you play the game and you play with your interaction keys, you'll you'll know what I mean. And it's, it's pretty easy. So here we go. We're at the Lucas section. You can see me. I'm just getting more and more stressed. Dude, calm down. Fucking chill out, dude. I was really, really stressed for this run. This was a, um, this really, like, freaked me out, man. It was, like, it was a rough one. <laughs> ah. So, we just have to sit through this. Uh, there is a skip that's happened on PS4s. It's exclusive to PS4s. Nobody knows why it happens, and it will invalidate your run if it happens. Uh, and it only happens on the disc version. And basically, you can uh, skip this... Uh, <laughs> instead of watching this cutscene, the TV just blows up. <laughs> Past Needle was so... I know, dude. Look at how much my hair has grown. Look at how short my hair is there. Look at... What are you... <laughs> um, so... Yeah, basically we got to sit through this nice long three minute cutscene. Um, <laughs> Past Needle is so young, so young and so itchy. <laughs> what are you smiling at, Past Needle? You wipe that smile off your face. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Past Needle was so itchy. <laughs> Well, I was like so nervous, you know, like I was like, I was like, I was, I was crawling with nerves. It was, it was so bad. <laughs> it's honestly the most nervous I've been for like anything I can think of in a long, long time. <laughs> like, just like my face, it goes from like this, like kind of like, like right now, like it's, it's still relatively tame, but eventually like I just get like, and I'm quiet. That's the reason I need to do commentary on this run, because I was so fucking quiet. <laughs> Good luck, emotes. <laughs> okay. So this is the Lucas section. Uh, we have to do a few very precise shots. They're actually not that bad. I do it with the G17. I know other people uh, <laughs> for Pass Needle. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Pass Needle appreciates that. Um, <laughs> uh, you could do it with the Albert if you really wanted to. I do it with the G17 because we have a few more shots to spare and we don't have to reload. So I'm going to shoot uh, this first bomb. It's pretty much right in front of us. The second bomb is hidden sort of like in that uh, mannequin over there. So we're going to kind of shoot the torso of the mannequin to detonate that bomb. So boom, and then boom. And this bomb we're going to block. You can actually be really, really generous with how far you walk into a trip mine before you block. Once you hear the sound, like there's a click sound before the explosion, uh, you don't have to start blocking until you hear that sound. So you can be, like, you know, really late. Um, wouldn't the reload make the Albert slower? Yeah, so um, if you know you're going to land those first two shots, which I'm never sure of, I don't know if it's going to take me three shots or four, um, if you're confident enough in landing those first two shots, you could just use the Albert. But the Albert only has three bullets per uh, reload. So if I missed that third shot and I didn't detonate the bomb, now I have to either switch to the G17 or reload the Albert. Um, I wouldn't want to do that. So I just stick to the G17. Uh, the Albert, the bullets are like bigger, if that makes sense. There's like a weird splash damage sort of thing that happens with the Albert bullets. So you kind of have a little bit more room to mess up the shot and still detonate the bomb. But I just go with the G17 because we have so many shots. You can run and gun, and, you know, you don't really lose any time. We have 10 bullets, and I can reload before I get to the next room, so... Um, yeah, anyway. I'm gonna dead, I'm gonna trigger this bomb, and then I'm gonna turn to the right and uh, block it. As long as we block it within the time that the sound goes off, so you'll hear, like, a click, that's fine. You'll, you'll totally block the damage, and you won't get staggered. If you mess this up, you get knocked on the ground. It's pretty bad. So we block... And then we shoot that guy, and then we shoot that guy, and we're on our way. Uh, this last bomb is a similar situation. We're going to look down and to the left as we come through this doorway, and then we're going to block and whip our camera around. 
That's because the trip mines are actually uh, based on where your camera is positioned more than where Ethan is positioned. So uh, by looking in a specific direction, you can trigger a bomb, even if you're standing in the same spot. So uh, we come through that doorway and then we turn around. If you turn around immediately, you're going to trigger the bomb too early. You're going to get staggered. Um, so we trigger this. Uh, we just need to back out of this menu as quick as possible. It doesn't matter. You don't want to enter anything there. Um, so now we're doing some advanced inventory management shit here. We're putting all of the items that we no longer need into the item box. And um, we're doing it in such a way that the items that we do need will be at the bottom of the list. And it's very important that you do this so that way you're not wasting time going through items in the item box trying to pull out the shit that you need. So, we're going to get rid of everything except for the new game new game plus items, but we're going to do it in the order of keys, and then knife, and then the other two key items that we can't delete out of our inventory. So, keys, well, knife, uh, and then the D-series arm, and the crank. I do the crank last. Uh, other people have a different strat where the crank ends up in a different spot. But the reason I do this with the crank is because I know it's going to end up in the second to last inventory spot. So all I have to do when I want to use the crank is press S, D, D, F. I'm, I'm so, that's built into my mind. I know what to do. If you, if you put the crank in a different spot, I, I would get totally fucked up. It would probably cost me like eight seconds. Um, I have, I have like a one track sort of monkey brain. <laughs> so <laughs> that's about as much as I can process. Uh, what we're going to do here is uh, you don't want to stand at this door that opens. If you push into the door, it never opens. So you want to stand like an inch away from it. And as soon as we start going towards the door, there's going to be another autosave. And we want to uh, retry at, as soon as we can, because that's going to put us on the other side of the door faster. So you'll see me. I'll stand a little bit away from the door. I'm not touching it. And then as soon as the door opens, I push against it. And then we're buffering to get that retry. You saw the icon, we retry, now we're on the outside of the door. Saves time. We come through here, it's faster to cut through this little room than it is to go on the outside of the hallway. Um, we're gonna turn here and shoot in between the bars to hit a mine there. Uh, it's a little tricky of a shot, but the first couple times you get it, you'll figure it out and you'll know. Um, we shoot these two guys because they can be a little bit annoying and we're gonna make our way down here. There's a quick drop strat that you can do that I can't quite do. Hi, Kai Top Hatter. Um, so we're just going to drop down here and um, <laughs> and we're going to pick up the battery. Uh, we set up our inventory so that way we're already over the battery because the next item that we're going to need to interact with is the battery. So we're going to come over here. We're going to use the battery. We're already over it. We just go boom, boom. Um, what we're doing here is... Uh, we're going to be doing some um, uh, reload canceling on the animations. We want to get nine shots off on this big molded guy's body. Um, it's a little bit tight. It, it's a, The timing is, is a little bit rough. Um, but we want to get nine shots off on, on this dude's body. If you shoot him in the head, it actually... Uh, Oh yeah, I don't think it highlights on the uh, on the in in stream chat. Um, if you shoot this guy in the head, it doesn't do anything, uh, which is like very counterintuitive. But uh, so you want to you want to make sure all of your shots are body shots, and you want to make sure that you get nine shots off. Uh, I don't know if I actually got it in this run, but uh, in order to get the nine shots off, we have to do some reload canceling. So as soon as um, in the lower right hand corner, um, I didn't right yeah. Um, as soon as we, uh, when we reload, yeah, I missed one. Okay. <laughs> Got it, babe. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> oh God, my throat. Um, so when you reload, uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the bullet counter turns green when you're actually full. Uh, this happens before the animation for reloading finishes. If you block, as soon as that, that number turns green in the lower right-hand corner, um, you'll actually cancel the last half of the reload animation, and it'll save a little bit of time. It saves enough time that we can get our nine shots off. So I'm taking my three shots, and then I'll reload, and then cancel with the block, and then take three shots. I missed that one. Reload, cancel with the block, take my three shots, 
And I know I'm gonna have to do another one. And then we shoot this boy in the leg because, um, <laughs> all right, it's better now. Um, we shoot this boy in the leg because uh, it, it uh, shortens his death animation. If you shoot him in any other spot, uh, it takes about like six to eight seconds for him to actually die. And we can't use the elevator until he's completely dead. So we shoot him in the leg, quickest death animation. He explodes almost instantly. We can interact with the button as soon as possible. Um, and the next thing you're going to see me do is I'm going to delete all my new game plus items. And uh, this is because all the new game plus items are going to end back up in the item box and we can use them later. And since we uh, moved all of our stuff into the item box before, uh, I know that my new game plus items will be at the very bottom of the menu. So the next time we interact with the item box, I can just go straight to the bottom of the menu, grab like that first eight things and we're fucking set. We're good. Um, so that's why I did that. So now we're coming through here and uh, we're going to do Lucas's little keypad. Oh man, uh, this is pretty tough to get. On PC, my best advice is to hold directionals at the same time when you're doing this keypad. So if you want to move diagonal, hold S and D at the same time. If you want to move um, in one direction, make sure you're not pressing it for too long because you'll move twice. It's a really, really annoying, almost frame perfect sort of like thing. It's, it's, it's just not fun. I don't know why they designed it like that. Like, it could have been a regular keypad. It could have just accepted numbers if you're on keyboard. I don't know. Wacky. So, um, we grabbed our candle. We're going to wait here. We're already highlighted over the candle because um, that's how we set our inventory up before. And uh, we're going to immediately interact with this as soon as we can. We're going to light our candle. And then we're going to go over to the door. We're going to burn the uh, thing. And as the uh, little rope is burning... I'm, you're going to see me move my inventory one spot down, and that's just so that way we're in the right spot for the valve handle in the next section. Um, this puzzle is the easiest puzzle. It's five down or five up. Either way, it works. If you go five up, I'll judge you. I'll think that you're like not, not quite right in the head, um, because only lunatics go five up. Everybody goes five down. Uh, so we grab our uh, <laughs> valve handle. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Um, and then we're going to come around here and interact with it really quick. Uh, and yeah, this, pre this is pretty much the Lucas section all done. And uh, we're going to relight our candle now that we've turned off the water. And uh, happy, happy birthday. You got to go. F you yeah, you got to go five down. Yeah. Only lunatics and... Absolute psychopaths go five up. I don't know who in their right mind <laughs> will be going five up out of retaliation. I mean, <laughs> people are gonna judge you. You know, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how you could walk around going five up around here. Okay, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I've never seen anybody go five up. I'm very serious. Everybody goes five down. <laughs> No, there's no judgment here. This is a no. This is a judge-free zone. Go, fi go five up. Go five down. Go five yourself for all I care. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh. Wait. All right. Wait. I'm missing something. I'm joking around too much. Okay. So, uh, this door is deceptive. You would think that the dynamite would be a problem, and Ethan would get blown to smithereens standing outside of this door. Um. It's not a problem. My my basic advice, and I'll just rewind one more time, is to line Ethan's shadow up. And this is why it's a good idea to keep the dynamic shadows on. Um, line Ethan's shadow up so you, you have like about an inch from uh, <laughs> five diagonal, the, the madman. Um, you want to line Ethan's shadow up so you have about an inch away from this uh, little, little crevice here. As long as you're this far away, you're not going to get blown away, which is ridiculous but it works um and the reason for this is because ethan has a coughing animation if he's coming through this um this little corridor and you're doing it after the explosion happens like if you stood back and waited for the explosion and then came through ethan walks slower because he's like <laughs> um so we we don't want that we don't want ethan to walk slower we don't want ethan to cough we value his lungs um so we want to get into that explosion as soon as possible. So, 
uh, <laughs> we wait for the explosion, and then immediately, as literally the second the explosion goes off, we're good to run in through the door. We're going to go in through here. We didn't get slowed down at all. We grab our uh, D-Series head, and we're going to immediately turn to the right and fortunately hit this door. As we open the item box, we're going to grab the first eight things out of the, or seven, first seven things out of the item box. And then we're going to uh, navigate over to our crank, which I actually went one over, even though I was like, I never messed that up. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're on our way. We're on our way to Jack 3, baby. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Literally gets encased in a mold kebab. <laughs> we value his lungs. <coughs> Speaking of lungs. Um, yeah, so we're coming over here. We're already, um, we already have our cursor in the right spot for this, uh, valve handle. As long as you did the first valve handle and you didn't change anything, then you're already good to go for the second one. I like how Fungo just, like, he just, like, He's like a, he's like a pioneer. Um, okay, wait, I missed something. Um, <laughs> so this guy, he has iframes. He has really awful iframes, actually. So that's why I wait so long before I shoot him. Um, I, I shoot him in the butt, which is definitely, just shoot him in the butt is definitely the we best way to, uh, to go. Uh, <laughs> he's like a Wild West cowboy with his jewel um <laughs> uh yeah i don't know what's going on i paused on a really interesting frame like ethan's like ethan's in the wild west he's like using this like it's a fucking six shooter he's like pow 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 he's he's fucking dude he's john wayne um so we're gonna shoot this guy in the butt and uh that that usually works um we want to push into him a little bit because <laughs> what's up pidge uh we want to push into him a little bit because that's going to prevent his buddy up ahead from spawning. There's usually a guy that drops down from the rafters. And if you push into this guy, um, we don't get any dude in the rafters. So we push into this guy. No dude in the rafters. We're on our way. Uh, since we already have the D-Series head and the D-Series arm, we're good to go. We walk up to Mia or uh, Zoe. And she starts uh, Vitamixing our blend of serum or whatever uh you're gonna see me do a trick where i go downstairs and i touch the item box really quick this skips zoe's uh cooking animation or whatever if you stay up here she does this whole thing with that blender over there and um we don't need to see that so we're gonna run downstairs and we're gonna skip that animation just a little bit it saves like maybe two or three seconds um and the safe way to do it is you just touch the item box and then you run back upstairs really simple and when we come back upstairs, she'll be holding out the serums, and we take them, and we're in Jack 3 now. You can see me, I'm... What a fucking tool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the first thing we want to do is <laughs> shoot uh, Jack 3 in the, in the eyeball, in his face, in the face eyeball. He has many eyeballs, but the main one, we want to shoot him in the main one. And uh, it's just blended up flimsy one gun. <laughs> yeah, it's just vitamins. It's just multivitamins. Um, so we shot him in the face. This next shot is very particular. Um, it'll take you a lot of practice to get if you're, if you're playing this game, but it is instrumental. It is like critical to getting a good Jack three. If you don't get this shot, you're going to kill at least a minute, like a, an actual full minute, which is not what you want in a run like this, um, dealing with Jack three. So, um, <laughs> flimsy one oh, okay Flint flintstones one gummies i got it um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna aim between this little crack in the boards and we're gonna shoot jack's lower eye um it's a really tight shot you have to be using the albert um actually i guess the shotgun will also work if you're doing a new game run um but in our case we're gonna be using the albert with enhanced ammo and uh we're gonna take this lower eye shot i don't think the g17 would work here um so boom 
We shot his lower eye. You know you got it if you see the blood and he starts to do this falling animation. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop down here and we're going to pull out our G17 and we're going to aim for his tail eye. Um, you're going to see me whiff a few shots here, I think. I think I missed like, I don't know, like three out of six of my shots. So um, it takes me a little bit longer than it should. Uh, yeah, I missed a couple shots there. And then we immediately, after that eye is dead, he's going to do another, uh, you know, impact animation. And uh, we want to pull out our circular saw. And we want to start immediately going to work on his eyeballs. It doesn't matter, uh, like, the order necessarily that you do this, as long as you're doing it from left to right. As long as you're doing it from left to right, it's all good. So um, we go for the back eye. I, I go for them, like, sequentially just because it's easy. Um, we go for this eye and then we run around the front of him. And as we're passing by him, we go for his face and then we squeeze by, we go for his other arm and then we go for his little chest eye. We do as much damage as we can there. We finish off his upper eye and then we finish off his lower eye and then we're done. So now we're going to stand. It's very important. I mean, it's not very important. It saves like a second. Um, you want to stand on the side of this door. So uh, you want to stand as close as you can to this ladder, basically, uh, on the side of this door. And you want to face the wall that I'm going to face. So I'm going to face... Um, I'm going to face this way. And I'm on, the, I'm on the door side. This just makes it so Jack grabs you faster. Um, if you're standing on the other side, Jack has to grab you and pull you all the way to the other side. So um, we do that. And as soon as Jack pulls us through... We pull up our circular saw, we finish off his final eye, fight's done, we made it, we're, we're done. Uh, you want to look up here, otherwise Zoe won't come through this door on time, which I learned the hard way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> tan of banana, exactly. Every second counts. Uh, every second counts, especially especially when we're like pushing this sub-128 here. Um, I was so nervous. Look at, look, at my, look at my silly face, look at me. <laughs> um... So we got a nice gold there. That was, that was pretty good Jack 3. Um, there's a new strat that was recently discovered that saves about 5 seconds over the old strat. I haven't practiced it. I don't really know it, so I don't go for it. Um, and then we're on our way to ship. Amazing. Amazing, right? Not bad. Ethan's like, oh no, I only have one serum left. I, I couldn't have seen this coming. <laughs> um, we're going to cure Zoe, obviously. Or uh, Mia. <laughs> we're going to cure Zoe, obviously. All right. Let me just explain. Besides being canon, I mean, Mia is our wife, right? So we're going to cure Mia. But if we cure Zoe, we have a final boss fight. I call it Mia 3. So just a funny little joke. Um, <laughs> nobody ever runs with curing Zoe. The end of the game is pretty much identical, except for that one last boss fight, which costs about a minute. So there's no point to really having a Zoe percent category, which has been discussed a lot, um, because the run would be exactly identical, other than the fact that you have that final boss fight. Odds are the world record holder would be the same. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no real point to having a category like that. So... Uh, that's why we don't do that. So we're going to aim towards uh, Mia straight away, and we're just going to mash our F and Q keys, and we're going to cure her, and we're in, we're in the boat. We're in that little ship. We're in the mini ship, and then we'll be in the big ship. Oh, see ya. Later, Nittle. I'll catch you later, dude. <laughs> Oh, it's all good, Top Editor. I'll catch you, man. Uh, we're doing we're doing a bunch of streams this week. We're we're going crazy this week. So I'll be live a ton. We're doing Spelunky two. We're doing Outlast. We're doing uh, like Amnesia: The Dark Descent later. We're doing a bunch of stuff. Um, no, uh, Tana actually, uh, Zo Zoe actually makes the game a little bit longer. Um, Aztec Goddess. Welcome to the family, son. Holy shit. Thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. That really means a lot. 
Now you can spam our hype emotes. We're working on getting some more. We're three subs away from getting a third emote. Uh, a third emote slot. And then we can fill it with a third emote, which will be super hype. Oh, welcome back. Hello. I see you're back now. I hope everything's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to be playing a bunch of games this week. We're going to be playing Spelunky 2, Amnesia, Outlast. Uh, we're going to be going through Silent Hill at some point this month. We're, we're doing a whole Spooktober thing. Uh, exclamation Discord. Actually, I can do it since I'm not actually playing a game right now. Um, come join us on Discord. I announce schedule stuff. I talk about uh, suggestions, anything you would like to see. Uh, subs get benefits. They're pretty minor. Holy shit! Tana Banana! Oh my god. <laughs> what a legend. Oh wow. Tana, thank you so much for gifting those subs. Wow. Oh wow. Those are two, those are two awesome people. I am glad those people got the subs. Thank you so much, Tana Banana. I appreciate that so much. Um, the support is never, never required, never necessary, but it's always, it means so much and it really helps, it, it helps keep the general, uh, general upkeep and flow. It helps, helps me make this, make this a more common thing, but, uh, yeah, stick around. We got a bunch of fun stuff coming up in this month. We're going to do a bunch of spooky stuff. We're going to be getting jump scared. We're going to be getting, uh, we're going to be getting weird with it. It's going to be good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tana. Thank you so much, Aztec Goddess. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> it means a lot. Um, so now we're into the Mia section. Um, this, this first part is, again, just movement optimization. We're already sort of uh, up 10 seconds in this run, so it's like a pretty good position to be in. But, but, there are two skips in this run coming up that could potentially burn the entire time save that we have so that's why like look at how look at how serious look at how fucking serious i'm getting because i'm like eyeing that timer i'm like <laughs> i bit my lips so much during that run i swear um <laughs> uh wow I, I i appreciate the support so much i'm, I'm like my heart is my heart is pounding um yeah, so we're so we're basically just making our way through. We're playing as Mia now. Uh, <laughs> former self looks constipated. Yeah, he does. He's like, he's having a rough time on the toilet. He's like, breathing deeply and waiting for this to be over. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this is why I'm excited to take a break this week. This is why this is why getting away from uh, RE7 will be a really nice break and. Um, Maybe I can find another speed game to get stressed about, but for now, I think I think we've we've had a pretty good fill of RE7 main game um, in the last few weeks. I've I've really been pushing it. Um, yeah, so we're getting in here. We're gonna turn around at the helmet, and that just triggers this cutscene immediately. The cutscene doesn't trigger until you turn around. You can sort of turn around once you get up to the pallets, but uh, I go up to the helmet just for good measure. Um, but yeah, and uh, we're going to do a drop into the uh, little vent here. Uh, there's a quicker drop that you can do. I don't know how to do it, so I should probably learn that. That's probably a thing that I should optimize, um, <laughs> but only saves maybe a second. So we're making our way through. Uh, it's really weird. The hitboxes on uh, these pipes extend way past where they visually appear. Uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a retry here. Uh, this is a PC exclusive retry. All the other retries can be done on console. This retry doesn't save time on console because this load time takes about thirty seconds on console. Thirty seconds. Uh, it takes six seconds on PC. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, console runners, that you have to deal with this. Um, and, and it's, it's 30 seconds in game time because the game is loading. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so six seconds and we're in. The reason I do that retry is because instead of having to drop all the way through the vent, you just appear already standing at the bottom of the vent. It saves a bit of time. Um, console runners would do that if the, <laughs> if the load time wasn't 30 seconds, 
30 friggin seconds like uh, so we get our little cutscene here nothing too much going on <laughs> that's what Evie would have said if we had the audio <laughs> Oh man, look at, look at poor me, poor me, just like, I look like I've eaten a bunch of ecstasy or something, <laughs> like, <laughs> having a bad day. <laughs> uh, he needs a drink, yeah, yeah, I, I really wasn't hydrating enough for that run. <laughs> Alcohol or, or water, really. <laughs> Okay, so we're coming up here. We're going to turn right immediately. It's super easy to get turned around and ship, but once you do this section a few times, you'll figure it out. Um, we're going to grab the fuse. That interaction is really specific because uh, you can actually interact with the fuse box twice and put the fuse back in. So you don't want to mash through that. You want to make sure you only press interact twice. If you press it more, you're going to interact with the fuse box again. You're going to put the fuse back in and you're going to run away and then you're going to be like, shit, I didn't grab the fuse. And then you're going to have to turn around, and it's going to be a bad day. Uh, so we climb up to the third floor, just movement optimization. Uh, we're going to pick up the videotape and put it into the uh, thing without really looking anywhere. And it looks a little tricky, but it's just a matter of looking down so that way you pick up the videotape first, and you're actually in the hitbox of the VHS player. So you can just go straight into, uh, bam, playing that video. So now we're playing as past Mia. We're going to discover what happened and why she was on the ship and all that, all that junk. I haven't really been going into the lore that much during this run. I'm more focusing on the uh, strategy and the tech. Um, I'm more willing to go into the lore during an actual run just because, like, the lore is... It's, it's question. Um, so Alan's going to tell us about how he's jerk. And we're getting ready for uh, one of the tightest sort of skips in the run and blowing it costs 16 seconds which as you can see we're only up like 12.7 seconds so if we failed this skip it would it would kill the entire pb um it's called vomit skip it's also called allen one skip it's pretty technical um i'm gonna pause and talk about it a little bit in depth when we get up to the the, the spot just because uh, this is this is one that definitely needs explanation and it really needs practice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come into the kitchen and what we want to do, what the goal is, is to our left is a pile of vomit. To our right is a door. We want to open the door and stand as far as we possibly can from the vomit while still being able to interact with it. We want to interact with the vomit and the second we interact with the vomit, we're going to start a phone call with Alan. In order to skip that phone call, which the phone call prevents you from being able to open up doors. So we wouldn't be able to get out of this cafeteria area if we couldn't do this properly, which would cost us the 16 seconds. So you're going to see me open up the door. I'm going to position myself so I'm as far away from the vomit as I can possibly be while still being able to press F on it and interact with it. Um, and I'm going to interact with it. And the second I do, the very second I do, like you have to be incredibly quick on this. Um, I'm going to turn around pr while pressing S. You have to be walking backwards while you turn around and then start running forwards. And as long as you make it past the first cafeteria table without being in the phone call, you're good to go. If it's still ringing while you're going past the first cafeteria uh, table, the phone call just ends and you skip 16 seconds. It's a big 16 seconds, especially an hour into an hour and a half run. Um, so you're going to see me open up the doors and positioning myself. I usually spend a, a little bit extra time positioning myself because this is a very tight skip. Um, and as soon as I do it, I'm, I'm holding backwards. So I'm walking backwards. I turn around and I start walking forwards. And then I, I pass the table and we're good. As soon as she puts the, the uh, iPhone watch away, uh, the Apple watch uh we're good to go so now we can come through here that's a really tight skip that that was that was my scariest moment of the run um and then we hit the elevator button the reason we do this is so we can come into here 
uh, pull all of our uh, New Game Plus items out of the box, and then come back to the elevator, and the elevator door should be opening just about when we round this corner. Um, there's a molded that's going to drop from the elevator shaft. There's a very specific reason uh, that I explained earlier that we go for the legs. It's the death animations. If you go for the head, if you go for any other body part, this molded's death animation can take upwards of six seconds. That's six seconds that you can't close the elevator door. So it's it's critical that you get the the quickest possible death animation. I like you can use the pistol potentially, but I I recommend using the saw because it it just guarantees that you're gonna get the right spot. It's not very risky. Um, so you're gonna see me saw his leg off. Quick death animation. I press the button. Elevator doors close. If we mess that up, it's like six seconds. So, boom, leg comes off. Elevator button. Doors close. Now we're going to change our inventory. I'm leaving my cursor over that spot because I know the next item that we're going to get is going to be the corrosive. Um, and I'm emptying a spot in our weapons slots because I know the next weapon that we're going to get is going to be a remote bomb. And we need the remote bomb in order to do the next skip, which is called bomb skip. Uh, failing this skip also costs about uh, 11 seconds, which would eliminate all of the time that we have saved. So... Both Vomit Skip and Bomb Skip are pretty much critical in this specific PB to getting a PB. If if you have a minute time bank and you mess up one of these skips, you're still probably going to get a PB. Um, it's just, you know, at, at this level of optimization, it's like either one of those skips would have just killed the run. It would have really ruined my night, especially considering um, this at, at this point in the run, this is the best pace I've been on maybe in my whole life. <laughs> uh, at this point in the run. You know what I mean? Like, it's the best possible current pace I've been on. So, we did our little inventory thing. We're in the right spot. We pull out our pistol because we're going to need to headshot some dudes. Um, so, we round the corner. Uh, we're still using the enhanced ammo, by the way. The enhanced ammo stays in the gun. Uh, we're going to headshot this boy. Uh, as we come around into this room, there's going to be a dude who drops from the vent. We're going to shoot him twice. That's enough to kill him. Um, and then we're going to pick up a remote bomb. I had to make sure I picked it up because not picking it up is bad. Uh, we're going to shoot this dude twice, which kills him. Uh, I went for a third shot because I wasn't sure. But fortunately, he was dead in a weird animation. And we put a bomb down. Now, this definitely needs some explanation. So, um, killing that guy isn't necessary. You could actually walk past that guy or you could kill him once you got up to this landing. I like to kill him early because it means I can switch out to my bomb a little bit earlier because I know I won't need my pistol. Um, so what you want to do, I'm trying to get like the perfect frame. What you want to do is put the bomb down right about here. So it's a little bit past the door. Once you're like in the crevice of the door, you want to put the bomb down on the ground. Um, this is a very specific setup. And from this point forward, you cannot press R. If you press R, it will detonate the bomb. Um, it's very easy to press R when you have a pistol out, especially if you have less than the, the maximum number of bullets. So that's why I usually try and keep uh, a bomb out or nothing, because if I have a pistol out, I, there's like a natural brain thing where I press R. Like I said, monkey brain, I don't know. I'm just weird. Um, so we're going to put our bomb down, and you can see the look in my face. I'm... Not sure if that's the right spot. I'm like, oh my god, I hope that's the I hope that's the right. Chill out, dude. It's the right spot. Everything's fine. Um, so we're gonna open this. We're gonna grab the corrosive. As I said, we already have our slot uh, in our inventory saved for the corrosive, uh, and we're gonna come over to this door and we're gonna use the corrosive. Um, since we already have our slot over there, we can just press F and Q. I know, so stressed. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're gonna come around here. Evie's saying some shit to us. Doesn't matter. The important part is we want to walk around the back of here. You could do the full full loop around if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it. You only need to walk about a quarter past this uh, railing, and then you can turn around. So we're gonna walk past about a quarter. We're gonna turn around. You know you got it right if your ele uh, if your if your elevator what the fuck? if your uh, watch lights up white. So you're going to see see how like the watch glitches out for a second, and that's how you know you walked far enough. 
Um, we turn around because it's a little bit quicker than walking the full loop. And we're going to come through here. You can see Stress Needle is, it, he doesn't know if the bomb skip's going to work. He really doesn't know. He's biting his lips so hard. And what we're going to do, and I find it helps to stay on the right side of the door for this. Um, it, you can get it while you're in the middle. You can get it while you're on the left. It really doesn't matter, but I've found the best luck when I'm standing more towards the right. Uh, we're going to walk past here, and as soon as we're past the bomb, or like a, a few steps past the bomb, we're going to detonate it. And as soon as we detonate it, we want to press our interaction keys. If we do this right, um, this will blow us through the doors, basically. So as we're getting blown up, we'll stagger forward, push through the doors, open the doors, and end up on the other side of the doors. If you do it wrong... If you do it wrong, you get blown onto the ground, and you have to wait 11 seconds for the phone call to end. So, yeah. <laughs> so, perfect. We got blown through, we didn't fall on the ground, we made it through the doors, we're on our way. The phone call is still going on, we're going to end the phone call and pull out our pistol, we're going to shoot these two dudes in the face, no problem, headshot, um, and we're on our way. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I am actually really pleased with my ship in this uh, PB. It came out it came out really good. Uh, so we headshot that guy. Um, let me just back up. Um, so this guy is a little bit hard to see because of the fog, but there is a guy there, and if you play the game a couple times, you'll you'll get very used to his positioning, and it'll be a very easy headshot. Um, this second guy that I shoot that falls from the ceiling, <laughs> really funny frame to pause on. Um, I've noticed that if you don't shoot him sometimes, he has a different hitbox and you can't walk fully through him. So I I call it like softening him by shooting a bullet into him. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can still get past him without doing that, absolutely. But I find that it makes it a little bit easier and um, it almost like it, it makes him get up slower or something. So we press our elevator button, we headshot these two dudes for free, just nice little kills. And we're waiting for our elevator. Classic. We're going to whip around this corner and press the elevator button. And uh, you don't want to be standing... So what's going to happen is the elevator is going to break down, obviously. Uh, you don't want to be standing all the way against the elevator doors. You want to be standing, like I said, with a lot of the other doors a couple inches away. So that way you can interact as quickly as possible. And um, so that way the animation just kind of like starts faster. Uh, if you're pushed up right against it, sometimes it won't even let you interact with it, which is weird. Um, so we're just going to push through here. Little door boost. There's going to be a guy that pops up around the corner. We're going to pop him in the face. Um, we continue on. We're going to climb up here. I usually try and line myself up as center with this climb as I can, because I find that it wastes a little bit of time if you have to... Um, so... I guess this is a good time to... We're fucking almost done with the run. But um, if you're standing too far away from a uh, interaction when you go to interact with it, sometimes there's this, um, like, zoom animation that happens where it's like, you know, the crank object is, like, right here, and I'm, like, all the way back here, and I interact with it from far away, but then Ethan does this, like, where he, like, zips into it, you know? And sometimes it feels faster... Almost all the time, it is slower. You want to be as dead center with the interaction as you can so that you can avoid as much of that zoom animation as you possibly can. Because in the ideal circumstance, there's barely any delay between the interaction, the actual pressing of your button, and the time that Ethan starts doing the interaction. If you have to do any movement, sometimes Ethan will take a step back, sometimes he'll take a step forward, sometimes he'll stick, take a step to the right or the left. Like, he can go any number of ways, and it can kill any number of seconds. Um, but for the most part, we want to be dead center with whatever we're interacting with, just to eliminate any of the animation. And um, I've been doing that throughout the run. For every crank interaction, for every, um, uh, you know, every interaction that requires Ethan to physically be close to the item in order for it to be interactable. Uh, including the candles, the, uh, you know, all, all that shit. There's, there's a lot of instances of that throughout the run. And that's a matter of feeling out. You'll know that you lost time because sometimes you'll be like, that was like two seconds slower than it usually is. Um, 
and you'll you'll be able to feel it uh, after playing the game a few times. So it's definitely something that you'll you'll feel out and you'll you'll learn what is the optimal and what feels the best. Dude, I look like a fucking doom creature right now. Like, what the hell is happening with my face? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh man. So Alan's gonna gonna throw up real quick. Hang on, I, I gotta grab another drink. I'll be right back. I know, right? He's so focused. Past me is like a whole different person, I swear. I don't know what's going on. Past me is like taking this way too seriously or something. Okay. So we're coming up on... Um, as you may have noticed, all of the cutscenes in this game are uh, unskippable. We're coming up on the only skippable cutscene in the game. It happens to be an hour and ten minutes into the run. Yikes. Um. <laughs> so we're going to blast through this door. We're going to turn around the corner. And we got this dude running at us. No problem. Um... And uh, basically, right now, we're waiting for this cutscene to start. As soon as the screen goes black and we start, that's a movie. So most of the other cutscenes, um, and this is a good time to explain it, I guess. Uh, most of the other cutscenes in the game are actually done in engine. The only time we can skip cutscenes in this game are when they're done out of engine. I really hope that changes for Resident Evil 8. I really, really hope that changes. Um... Because skippable cutscenes would make this game about 20 to 30 minutes shorter or something like that. Like, it would make it substantially shorter if we could skip cutscenes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we skip our only cutscene of the game. Um, and, yeah, I guess I guess that's about it. Um, also, I should mention here, uh, we're on PC, we use an auto-splitter with live split. So I'm not doing those splits manually at any point. Um, they're all being done by live split, which make uh, which makes it a lot more um, reliable. And um, for most uh, sequences, when the screen cuts to black, that is technically the end of the sequence and the beginning of the next sequence. I don't know how that works in terms of memory values and stuff like that. That's live splitter technical shit. So, just explaining that because I know some people ask, they're like, "Are you splitting yourself?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, no. it's an auto splitter." <laughs> I, I would not be pressing the split button on time. No way. Okay. So now we're doing the Mia cleanup section. Uh, we're going to climb... Uh, this this section is actually really fun casually, just because it it's, like, very uh, OG Resident Evil in terms of, like, how it plays out. It, you're doing a lot of backtracking. You know the area, but you're you, you have to explore it again. Uh, sort of thing. You have to pick up more new key items that weren't there before. Like, feels more in line with, like, other Resident Evil games than the rest of RE7, which is sort of like a departure in a good way. Um, yeah, way too focused to do mid. Yeah, forget it. If it was a matter of doing manual splits or just following the IGT, I would just follow the IGT and forget live split altogether. Um, so, yeah. We're coming this way to get the uh, lug wrench. <laughs> I keep looking at my face. What a dumb face. Um. <laughs> Chill out, dude. What are you doing? Uh, so we grab the lug wrench, and we're going to drop down here. Um, basically, our, our inventory is already positioned in the right spot. Because we were already in the right spot for the corrosive, we never had to move our inventory a single spot we can go straight into using that lug wrench on the elevator uh, hatch. 
and we can drop down here. You don't want to run off here. You want to walk. If you run off here, you get a weird like stagger animation and it costs a little bit of time. Um, there's a trick here that I'm going to try. It's called God Door. I should explain this. Um, so this door, for some reason, not the first time we go through it, but this time it um, closes really, really quick. Like really, really quick. Um, so the goal here is to get into this room, grab the item that we need, turn around and walk out of the door before it closes. That doesn't happen in this run. In this run, I think I get the door closed in my face. Um, so, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, I feel that. I feel that past self. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we grabbed the item that we needed, but we got we got blocked out of the god door. It's it's like it's deceptively tight. You have to interact with the door at the last possible second. At the last possible second, so that way you can grab the item. You also have to interact with the item at the soonest that you can, so that way you can immediately turn around. Um, I guess worse than God Door would be not interacting with the item and turning around too early and then getting locked out because you didn't grab the item. You know what I mean? Like, that would be way worse. So I'd rather grab the Corrosive and get locked out than um, not grab the Corrosive and get locked out and then have to turn around. So it's fine. So we come down here... Um, this route can be a little bit hard to know for uh, newcomers. I'm just going to show it one more time because uh, it confused the shit out of me as a, as, as a, I was going to say as a kid, but I started learning this like seven months ago. Um, <laughs> seven months ago when I started learning this, this part of the route confused the shit out of me. What you want to do when you come out of collecting the corrosive is you want to make a left and you want to go down the staircase. Um, so... My, my problem when I was first learning this was I would go right. Make sure you go left. That's important. Um, and you can go straight down this staircase and then pick up the fuse right when you come out of the staircase. So you come out of the, uh, uh, yeah, you come out of the staircase, you grab the fuse, you try and dodge this guy. I didn't do a great job. Um, and then we go back into the elevator. Uh, you could technically get down to this level by going into the elevator and dropping down. It is a lot slower, though, so don't do that. Go down the stairs. It's way faster. Um, so now we climb up here, and we're going to get the fuse cable. Or power cable. Fuse cable. No, 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 it's, it's power cable. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to come here. Uh, this guy is, is kind of funny. He looks very threatening. He's standing right in front of a door, or he's thrown right in front of a door. Uh, you can basically just bump straight into him, and as soon as you see the interaction option for this door, interact with it, because you can totally just push past this dude and interact with the door with the corrosive and get through the door. So, we're going to do that. I'm going to step past the dude. He he goes off to the side. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And we walk through. So, it's pretty good. Okay, so I'm following a pretty specific line here. <clears throat> you might not notice it, but my movement is being... I'm being very tight on the corners here. Like, very, very tight. The reason for that is because there's going to be a fat molded that spawns. We need to manipulate the way that he moves, so that way he doesn't damage us. So, you'll watch. I play this very tight. I'm right on the corner. I go as tight as I can, and I go straight into interacting with the power cable, right? Right? And I'm staying crouched in this corner. And the reason for this is because there's a molded right now that's vomiting against a wall. If we didn't do this, he would be vomiting it into us. And it would interrupt our interaction. It would basically kill the run. Um, so we grab our power cable. See that guy? See how he's vomiting all over the place? And he's just facing the wall? He's, to he's totally useless. He, as long as we do that, he doesn't do any, any damage to us. We're, we're all good. So we're making our way. We have the two items we need. We have the power cable and the fuse. We're going to just squeeze past this dude. No problem. And then we're going to drop down back into the elevator. And since our inventory is already uh, positioned, thanks to our inventory management, we can just go straight into interacting with that. We can do, um, I basically do F, 
F Q F D F. And that's, that's how I interact with that. And I put in all both items that I need and I move over one slot to the right. You can do it however you feel comfortable, but that's just what works for me. And uh, you may notice that we have no weapons here. That's fine. We don't need to kill anything. We don't need to do any damage to anything. We can just squeeze past everything. So we're going to make it past this guy. Kind of sucks taking damage from him, but it's fine. If you take damage from this guy, this guy, the four-legged, he'll always jump back. You can always guarantee that he's going to jump back. So you'll see he jumps back. That's fine. We can get past him. No drama, no stress. And this guy, we just push past and up the stairs. This guy, always stay on the inside of him. If you go on the outside, you're going to lose time. Um, the inside, you can always squeeze past. Um, wow, look at this. Turning into a demon or something. <laughs> um, so here, uh, we're going to do a retry here. And um, we... Pause buffered the hell out of it, and basically, again, you're waiting until you see that uh, little auto auto save icon, um, and now we're happy because we got a gold split. Look at that. <laughs> Calm down. Um, so yeah, now we're in a uh, now we're in one of the final cutscenes. Yeah, hype, 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 hype. <laughs> so yeah this is a nice little cutscene um Aztec Goddess how, how have I been doing so far how do you think have you learned have you learned a lot are you ready to go are you ready to beat my PB in Resident Evil 7 <laughs> are you ready <laughs> I like I like to think that I did a pretty good job. We're almost at the end. We only have a few more major things. <laughs> well, yeah, I I did the best I could. Me and past me, we we worked as a team and we tried to get things done. Well, I got I got plenty more lessons. I got Plenty more lessons, dude. I got lessons coming out of my ears. No, I'm I'm, I'm sort of hoping to move away a little bit from uh, RE7 in the upcoming uh, month. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I I, I I try. I really try. I really try to explain everything and like go over all the details and all the little things and. I try to be as thorough as I can while still breaking everything down and stuff, so that, that means a lot. I really, I, I try as hard as I can. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are uh, out of this uh, cutscene, and uh, we're, we're going to break out of the kebab, which is great. Nobody wants to be in a kebab. Actually, I would, I would be in a kebab. I'm excited. This week, this week is going to be fun. We have Spelunky 2. We have a lot of other cool games coming out. There are, we have a lot of other cool games that I'm slated to play. And then... Speedrun, potentially. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to speedrun yet. But we have to decide in the next month. I, wanna, I, I need to pick another horror game that I'm going to get good at. And I don't know what it is yet. So... That's gonna be that's gonna be this month. It's gonna be a lot of or next month technically, a lot of trial and error. So we're back into a uh, movement section here. There's not much to talk about. Um, we're we're back. We're playing as Ethan, the legend, the man, the myth. Um, just a little crouch there. It's easiest to uh, strafe as you bump against the uh, fence. And you can crouch while you sort of, like, bump into it. Doesn't lose any time. 
Uh, unlike the other fence, it's not as it's not as punishing. And then here, it's just a matter of crouching on time before you bump into the log. Um, you'll notice I like wag my mouse up and down when I come to this part, and that I like sometimes I'll bump into that log without climbing it immediately. I think sometimes waving your mouse upside down it hits the uh, trigger. Look at. <laughs> Fucking serious. I am so I am so tense during this run. It's crazy. Just the contrast of like me explaining it like in a good mood versus <coughs> past me like stressed and dying. I mean I like Ethan, dude. He he goes after his bay. Like, she was missing for three years and he goes after her. That's that's like it's dedication. I would have given up. Sorry, babe. Nothing. Um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, so we're gonna grab the um, <laughs> we're gonna grab the rocket launcher. That's the only thing we need right now. Um, we're gonna juke past these molded and press the elevator button. Uh, and we don't we don't need any weapons right now. Which is super fortunate. Super duper fortunate. It's great that they gave us that rocket launcher. And it's great that we don't need any weapons. Um, because the next time we need to use the item box isn't for a little bit. So um, the reason I was stressed there and the reason I'm exhaling is because sometimes the molded can hit you as you're getting into the elevator. Um, it's purely based on the path you take. So let me just go back. Um, watch the path I take. This is a specific path. If you take another path, you're going to end up with molded in your elevator. And that's, it's not good. You don't, you really don't want that. It makes it so you can't interact with the elevator button. You can't close the door. Um, so if the molded hits you, you're not going to be able to close the elevator door. It's going to kill your run. So that's, that's why it was a stressful uh, section. Um, so uh, we have our rocket launch or our grenade launcher. And we only need that one shot for a specific purpose. Um, it's coming up in a second. So a four-legged is going to drop from the ceiling. We're aiming for the spot in between the um, that proximity mine. You see that proximity mine between the doorway? <laughs> I wonder what he's doing. I mean, I don't know whatever you were doing like two nights ago <laughs> um this shot it seems specific but i've never missed this shot it has a huge window um it's really it's really hard to miss so as long as you're aiming anywhere between the four-legged and that that mine you're gonna set off both the mine and kill the four-legged so boom four-legged's dead we can drift past him and the mine's exploded we're good we don't need any more weapons for this section. We can squeeze past these guys. Uh, they take too long to spawn. <clears throat> Coming up here, this is just movement uh, based. Just, you know, tight corners, straight lines. Um, you know, interacting with things as quick as you can. We get up here, we turn around so that way we can interact with the uh, cart as soon as possible. We push that down. We run down here. We're on our way. With how this thing started, I thought this was going to take me seven hours. But um, So we do a block there. It's similar to the blocks that we do in the Lucas section. Um, basically, it's just a matter of, of turning as you hear the click. So what we're going to do here is we have to make the serum, uh, the, ne the necrotoxin. And... Um, we have this the the EV cells or whatever. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cells in the briefcase to make the serum. And since that takes about like five seconds, seven seconds, uh, we have enough time to run to the item box, grab all of our shit, and then run back before the thing gets made. So that's what we're gonna be trying here. So we open the box. Um, I think I switched my inventory over. Or no, we're already good. And then we run over here. We're going to open the item box. This requires some pretty fast menuing. You got to grab all your shit. You got to run back here. And 
we made it just on time. So we're interacting at the second that the necrotoxin was available. And we grab it. Good to go. We have our final key item. We are just rolling on through. There's only one, there's only one final thing that could mess up this run. Um, and it would eat, if we messed it up at this point, it would eat all, about 11 seconds. So that's, that's why I'm going to be really stressed up until um, Injected Eevee. Um, so uh, the Salt Mine section can be a little bit tough if it's your first time playing the game. Um, this is the final retry of the game. We do this because A, it gives Ethan his faster run speed. And B, it resets all the positioning of the molded in this area. Um, so this is this is probably the biggest time save for any retry. To mess up any of the other retries would probably cost you in the range of like four to six seconds, maybe. This retry, if you mess it up, it's going to cost you like 15 seconds. So it's very important to remember this retry. This is the, the by far the most important retry. Um, so you're going to see me pause buffer a little bit and then retry as soon as I can right here. Good. So if we didn't do that, this first guy that spawns here, he would already be up. This guy that spawns here, he would already be farther down the walkway. The guy that spawns up, up around the corner, he would already be spawned and walking towards us. So it just fucks up a lot of stuff if we don't get that retry. Um, and obviously our, our run speed is faster. Uh, I got hit by this guy. That's... That's not great. That's something I can improve on. <laughs> but um, So I switched my grenade launcher. We're going to blow up this four-legged. Uh, how you get through the salt mines is a matter of preference almost, uh, as long as it works for you. And uh, this is the only important part of salt mines, really. Uh, we're going to switch to our neuro... Uh, neuro? Neuro rounds? Yeah. So you'll notice I switched from the red ammo to the blue ammo for the uh, grenade launcher. This is because the blue ammo actually stuns enemies, or most of them. It kills a few of them. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get as close as we can to this ladder, basically, with these guys spawned, and we want to fire a blue round at their legs. Um, if you've ever played this section casually, you might know that if you try to climb this ladder, <clears throat> with these guys still alive, they'll vomit, and they'll knock you off the ladder, and it costs an insane amount of time. So we don't want that. We neurotoxin the guys, they're currently stunned, and we're able to climb all the way up the ladder. So, that's success. That's a big strat. That saves probably 45 seconds or so, because that fight takes a while. Okay. So now, we have one last thing coming up. We have one last thing. Um, it is EV one cycle. So coming up, um, <clears throat> man, my voice is going, <laughs> uh, for the most part, this is just a walking simulator. We're just going in the, uh, we're just watching the previous scenes that happened back when we were in guest house. And, um, what we're going to is the attic, and in the attic is Evie. And when we get to Evie, she's going to do these psychic blasts at us. And um, we can actually, we can, cat, you do. Okay. Um, we can actually block the psychic blasts. Um, it, it knocks us back a little bit, and it slows us down. But blocking the blasts is faster than getting knocked down by the blasts. If you don't block them, you get you get straight up knocked down. It costs probably like ten to twelve seconds at at minimum. Um, so yeah, the thing is, you can get to Eevee after only one blast if you stick to the right as you're walking towards her. So you block the first blast and then you stick to the right as you're walking towards her. And instead of getting blasted a second time, even though she does a blast, um, you just go straight into the animation of jabbing her with the uh, serum. So you can see how fucking stressed I am, because this this is it. This is the moment that the run could just go to shit. 
is the most important moment of the run. So I'm pushing to the right a little bit, and we zoom straight in, and, oh man, look at that. Yes, yes. That's what I do. That's what I do. And we go straight into stabbing her, and I'm actually really hyped to actually just seeing myself. And this is the first time in the last hour that I can finally relax. This is the first time in the last hour that I can finally relax. Hang on, let's, um... Let's get this, uh... Time. Because getting knocked down there is like a lame... Yes! Yes! It's happening! I was so fucking scared that I was gonna get knocked down there. I was so... So fucking scared. I was thinking about it, like, the whole way. Literally, from the start of ship, I was like, Evie's gonna fucking knock me down. And it's gonna burn all of the time. Because getting knocked down there is like 11 seconds, if you're lucky. So, holy fuck, thank god that worked. Oh my god. Oh. I can finally relax. I can finally breathe. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> that was that was definitely the most stressful part of the run, I would say, because I knew we could we could easily blow the PB all we could blow the whole thing there after all this all this stress and all this tension. Um, so this final boss fight, if you don't know, uh, this is the easiest boss fight in probably any Resident Evil game. Uh, you, you don't actually have to do anything for the first half of this boss fight as long as you have the circular saw. Um, or actually, even if you don't have the circular saw, you don't have to do anything in the first half of this boss fight. You can just literally sit here. The only time that we have to do something is once, uh, Evie grabs us. When she grabs us, we have to saw at our leg. So you'll see me whip around and saw at my leg. And, um, that's about it. After that, we get the, uh, the Albert, which is funny because we've had it the whole time. Uh, and Chris Redfield tells us, like, use it, use it. And uh, we shoot Eevee four times to kill her. The best way to do that, and I've discussed this with a lot of people, is to actually lift your mouse so you don't aim. Because moving your camera at all messes up your shots. So um, you'll see, I, I sawed myself in the leg. Wait, uh, let, me just, let me just go back. So you'll see, as soon as I can interact with anything, I saw myself drop. If you don't do that immediately, you're kind of screwed. Um, and then we have Chris Redfield calling us, telling us to use it. We grab our gun, which we've actually had the whole time, which is kind of silly. And we uh, we give Evie her her final her final shots. Three, four, and she's dead. And you know she's dead when she does that whole whipping animation. And, uh, yeah. There you go. That's my, that's my commentary, explanation, run breakdown, tutorial, masterclass, lesson, guide, walkthrough, whatever the fuck you want to call it. There it is. Um, and now just, just for the comedic factor, let's go through and watch my, my final, my final reaction at the end of that run, because I know, I know it was, it was pretty huge. so close. Why does it have to be so close? Yes! 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 By one second! By one second, sub 129. I mean, sub 128. Oh my god. Two seconds. Two seconds according to IGT. I'll take, I'll take that extra second. Holy shit. Finally. Finally did it. Damn, if I didn't 
fucking work my ass off to get that done. Holy shit, man. Wow. Wow, that barrier. That barrier, dude. Gramblorf, thank you for the GG, dude. Oh my god, it feels so good. <laughs> uh, uh, there you have it. <laughs> Stream again, yeah. I'll do a commentary on the commentary, and then I'll put like a third box over over here, and I'll be wearing a different colored shirt. I'll wear like a green shirt, and I'll just do commentary on all the things that I missed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it for me tonight, guys. Um, that was, that was a really fun, that was a really, actually really fun way to, um, do a stream. I, uh, yeah, I need to high five my past self. Wait, let's just prepare this in advance. So when I edit it together. There we go. Okay. All right. We've set it in motion. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, this was, this was a really fun way to, uh, review my PB. Tana Banana, again? Again? Legend, Tana, with the gift sub. Welcome to the family, a Bearsman. <laughs> Thank you so much for gifting subs. I appreciate that so much. This, this was a really, this was a really fun stream. Um, hmm. Mm. Holy shit, you're right. We did it. We did it. 26, you pushed us. You pushed us there. Tana Banana. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll bring you a cat. I'll bring you a cat. Um, join us in Discord because we, we do want suggestions. We want many suggestions, ideally. Hang on, I got a cat. No. She's like, I want to be now. There you go. Oh, look at him. He's cleaning my hands. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, we can get some more cat. We need like cat sleepy. We need um. We need we need a few others, but. What do you do? Oh, little baby. Oh, she wants to be held like a baby. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this this was a really fun stream. Um, in the future, I definitely definitely want to do um more more run reviews and stuff like that. Um. I don't get enough time to talk during my runs and explain sort of like what's going on and stuff like that. So this was a, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? You're cleaning my fingers? It's gross. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm so glad I had a bunch of, a bunch of people hanging out in chat. Aztec goddess and uh Tana banana. I really appreciate it so much. It's, it's, it makes it so much more fun having people on the stream. Oh, look at him. What are you looking at? Where are you looking? <laughs> Alyssa was here too. That's true. <laughs> I appreciate everybody being here. Um, it makes the stream so much more enjoyable. And um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of cool stuff planned for this month. And uh, I actually, I want to expand on the list of games that I have planned for Spooktober. So if you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas for uh, fun stuff that we can play that uh, casually or potentially for me to speed run, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, finding a new speed game. I'm going to give Outlast a really solid chance because I've been recommended it by a lot of people. So um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's sort of up in the air what we what we do and where we go from here, you know? And uh, I want this to be as much a thing that I do as it is a thing that the community does. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, babe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I want, I want it to be I want it to be as enjoyable for me as it is for you. You know? So I'm gonna uh I'm gonna raid Kadic, who is playing some Resi 2. And uh let's let's show him all the love that we can. And I'll um I'll be posting this and highlighting it on my YouTube and stuff like that. So if you came late or if you want to review it or if you want to check out any wacky stuff if you want to make fun of me or whatever um i'll have the highlights and the uh youtube video up soon and uh yeah i i really hope i really hope this tutorial ends up helping somebody um but yeah thank you so much tana i <laughs> thank you thank you for being here um i it, it would be hard to stream if nobody was willing to watch so i i really appreciate the support and the love and uh we'll We'll see you guys tomorrow, right? So let's uh let's show let's show Caddick some love. Hey, no problem, Aztec Goddess. Thank you so much for being here. I I really from the bottom of my heart, I love you guys so much. So I'll see you guys soon.